Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. We don't even need to explain that. We've got a treat for you today. Terry returns, and this is what we've got on the agenda. The Eddie Earn Farcical £25 pay-per-view show. Then we're going to speak about uh, a bit about Mick Ennis's show and a bit about Dennis's show and what next for uh, Dennis and Steve Crump. And then we're just going to chat a little bit of boxing at the end and wrap it up. But how are you doing, Terry? No, I'm all right, man. All I want to say to your fans, Paul Key, is listen, sometimes you've got to watch a video over two days. This might be a video that you watch the first half today, you watch the second half tomorrow. Like, don't don't lose interest halfway through. Yeah. Like we keep dropping those classic material bombs continuously throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Well, this is off the cuff today, but this is a treat for all you hardcore boxing fans today. And all you hardcore haters as well, because you keep watching too. So keep watching and you might learn about the sport of boxing. Right. Straight in. Gonards deep. <laughs> Eddie Hearn's show. 25 quid. Over to you, Terry. I think 25 quid's an absolute disgrace. There, there should be something that says mandatory defences shouldn't be paid per view because you can we can all agree on this, right? Joshua Pulev was a fight nobody wanted. You could see Joshua wasn't really up for it. And the only thing that got him up for it was the fact that Pulev kept taking shots at him. And you could see that you know, Hearn's like, has Pulev, I don't really care about this. No one really cared about this fight, but it's a fight they had to do because they painted themselves into the corner because they keep dithering about you know, taking these big fights. And, you know, as people have said before, you're now starting to wonder how serious Joshua is about his legacy because he keeps talking about his legacy, but everything he's done up until this point, these are all B-level fighters, right? We can agree on that. These are B-level fighters. He hasn't fought an A-level guy since probably Vladimir. And that was an, that was an A-level guy who was getting old and had been on, the, he'd been on the beach for a year and a half. So we paid 25 quid to basically watch a glorified sparring session. And with no real undercard, I just think if you paid 25 quid for that, more for you, man. That's a, that's a Nando's for two. You could have taken your partner out. I mean, you could have gone out with the kids, gone to the cinema for that. But unless you're in tier three, so apologies for you guys in tier three. But man, what an absolute waste of money. Let's not mince our words. It was a waste of money and a waste of time. Yeah, it weren't good, were it, Terry? No. Did you find it weird, Russ, that Eddie Hearn was talking about we're going to say thank you to all the key workers by making a thousand seats available to the key workers? Yet everyone in boxing seemed to be at that show on Saturday. So I was like, well, are these guys all key workers? Like I haven't seen Dean White, you know, pushing wheelchairs at Leeds Royal Infirmary or anything like that. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Is Dean White uh, even a real person? Does he even exist? Well, well, well the physical being exists by all means. He, he really does exist. Yeah, he's a lump, isn't he? Ah, Porky, man, look, that doesn't intimidate you. Man. You've still you've got that footwork. <laughs> you want for running away? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you were, if Roy Jones had got injured, they said that you were going to be the guy that faced Tyson, and Tyson was nervous about that. So Tyson was actually praying that Roy made it to the ring. Yeah, Mike Tyson, come see me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so moving on, moving back onto the the pay per view show. Why why do you think it was pay per view, Terry? Josh has got to keep earning. That the, look, we've talked about this before, us. When when you're doing a training camp with seventeen people. In total, that's including your sparring partners, your masseuses, your nutritionists, this, that, and the third, your your performance analysts. How do you have performance analysts for Kubrat Pulev? Like Huey Fury seemed to be having a relatively easy time of it before he got cut. Why do you 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 don't need performance analysts for a guy like Kubrat Pulev? He does the same thing every time. So what do you need an analyst for? So you've got these 17 people who all have to get paid. You know, you're paying for sparring you're paying for accommodation you're paying for their services you're paying for everything and that's not even the office side of team aj that's not your the guys that manipulate social media that's not the guys who go out and find the sponsorship deals that's not the guys who 
who handle the day-to-day -day operations and making sure that Joshua gets from A to B. They, there was about 30 people, maybe more, 35 in Team Joshua. So There's 17 that, of them just at the EIS, isn't there, alone? Yeah. So let's just say, realistically, the running costs of that operation are $2 million a year, right? For Joshua's team, like for this, this, this Joshua project to function year on year, let's just say it's $2 million. And then you've got to think that Joshua's going to put money aside for when he's not boxing. And then there's taxes, right? And if he's earning it, now, this is where it gets interesting because I don't like to talk about people's earnings, but we've got to try and work out, you know, how much profit he's turning over. What's the, what's the IBF split for mandatory? Is it 75-25? Yeah. Okay. So best case scenario, it's 75-25. So Joshua gets 9 million, Pulev gets 3. But there's a rematch clause in there. So I imagine they had to pay Pulev extra to have the rematch clause. So let's say... 5 million, do they? They get 5 million? No, nah, 3. 3. But didn't, didn't they offer him a bit more if he'd sign a rematch clause? And if he lost, he still gets another pay-per-view on Sky, apparently. Because he might be fighting... Some, Dylan White. No, I think, so, so I think he's offered 3. And it was probably going to be maybe two, two and a half without the rematch clause. And so that, so realistically, so, so AJ is probably earning seven or eight million for this fight. Yeah. And that's, you know, so there's not a lot of spread. If you really think about the, the number one guy in boxing, according to her, if you really think about that, that's not a big spread. Five million quid, once you take your running costs out of it, that's not a lot of money. And then Josh has got his own running costs in terms of having to maintain the, the multiple houses that he owns and lives in. So, Joshua's got to keep fighting. He can't go a year without fighting because then he's going to dip into previous savings. And there's no guarantee that his tax issues have gone away either. So, you know, the guy has to keep earning. And he has to, it's not just for him, but it's for Sky as well because Sky haven't had a great year sports wise. So they're looking at Joshua saying, we need to get our money out of Joshua. So the 25 quid isn't necessarily a Joshua decision, it could be him and it could be Sky. Doesn't Joshua live in a council flat with his mum? Oh, we still have oh, it? Isn't it? Oh, here we go. Oh, well, we still having this conversation, right? I think we all know. Man. I think we all know he's got the 200 grand kitchen. I mean, the house is well taken care of. Yeah. Yeah, we know that's just Eddie Earns trying to make out he's Mr. Humble, isn't it? But, and this is the point, right? This stuff needs to stop because. I think boxing history has shown us, Russ, you make the most money when you're horrible. Yeah. I don't care what anything. You make the most money when you're horrible. And it doesn't mean you have to be horrible 24-7. It means that in the thing that we call fighting, which is essentially organized violence, we want to know that you're a horrible guy and you're willing to do horrible things to your opponent. Don't, don't talk to me about staying humble and don't let the pain get to your heart. I don't... I, I mean, you're not bloody Curtis Stigers or Michael Bolton. Do you know what I mean? You're Anthony Joshua. You're a fighter. Talk fighting stuff. Don't 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 fucking sit on Sky Sports singing love songs to us. I mean, we're boxing fans. Yeah, it's. Uh... Well, do you think that is that manufactured that they're creating a fake thing around him and getting everybody to be drawn in on it? Yeah, no, I know people asking yeah. questions daily about the the convictions that he's got and things like that. He's, they're just dismissed as very quickly, aren't they? Nobody yeah. dare rock the boat, dare they? So, I, I, to be honest, Russ, I'd rather leave the convictions alone. I think he's kind of been through that. Like we, we've yeah. we, we've hammered that to death. It's more just about how serious are you about being great, Josh? Well, they're the questions people should be asking. How yeah. serious are you? Because Russ. My test of greatness is this. Show me a guy that you have chased down. So let's take Muhammad Ali. Ali chased down Sonny Liston. After he lost to Frazier, he chased down Frazier for the rematch. He chased down George Foreman. Yeah. Frazier chased down Ali. George Foreman chased down Joe Frazier. They chased them down. Lennox was Ken chasing Norton. the big bow down. Ken Norton, he chased down. He fought him three times just to, just to two one him, didn't he? He chased Larry Holmes. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie Shavers, he chased him down and he was putting people to kip. And, and so that's what makes you great, Russ, is that you're there going, I'll, I'll go after these monsters. And we see it with Tyson Fury. Fury's like, yeah, I'm ready for Wilder. And he's like, next time I fight him, I'm going to stop him. He does his job. 
were waiting for Joshua to just come out and say, listen, forget all the talking. If I've got to drop a belt, I'll drop a belt. Me versus Fury now. Now. That's what I want to hear. Even if it can't happen till the end of next year, I don't mind. But I want to hear Joshua say, I'm only focused on Fury. Don't talk to me about mandatory. Don't talk to me about anything else. I want Fury and I want this settled once and for all. Then, then we'll all sit up and go, that's what we need to see. Yeah, but if it doesn't happen and Joshua now goes down the mandatory route again, do you think that it will be overkill? And do you think Eddie's going to milk it as much as they can until they've got to come to the table and fight Fury? Do you think that's what they're going to take it to? Till the numbers drop that bad that they say we've got to make the Fury fight? So, so the issue with the Fury fight is this, right? Tyson Fury's got to fight again. He, he, he can't go 14 months without having boxed. There's no way. It's not realistic. So he's got to fight again. That takes us into the second half of next year before the fight can happen. Yeah. And then question yeah. one is, are there going to be any crowds? Yes or no? Question two, are, are we going to be allowed to travel as Brits? Because like it seems like 60% of us are affected with this COVID anyway. So are we going to be allowed to travel? Don't know. We'll, I mean, so where are you going to have it? Oh, we have it in Saudi. Look, listen, Saudi don't want our problems. They don't want our COVID. Yeah. So now you're struggling. You, you're really struggling to find a window where this can happen. So when Eddie says, we're going to make the fight this week, you're not. Because we don't even know who Fury's fighting next. No, we don't, do we? So now look. Now, yeah, so now look at it. Let's say we do the unification for October next year. Then there's going to be a rematch. So that's going to be like April, May time, 2022. When does Dillian White get his shot? Do you see what I mean? You're looking at 2023 before Dillian fights for his first world title. That's if he beats Povetkin. Exactly. That's a big if. So now, now you're looking at this, and if you're Dillian, you're looking at this Fury Joshua thing going, this is a mess. I should have taken that fight last year when I had the chance. Because it's not going to come again until 2023, I think, being honest with you. I don't think he'll get it again off Eddie Earn. I think Eddie Earns more or less thought, right, if you're not going to take that, no problem. I think he's had his chance now, Dillian. And I don't think it's an attractive fight now he's been iced again, do you? No, no, I don't. I think I think you're spot on with that. And and this is what happens when you wait too long. The money just disappears because you're trying to manufacture champions, you're trying to manufacture legacies, you're trying to manufacture greatness with with below par raw materials. And so eventually you're going to come a cropper. Let's remember Joshua lost to Andy Ruiz, who's a B-level fighter at best. Yeah. A 40 year old Pebekin's a B-level fighter, whatever anyone tries to tell you. 41. Yeah, so how are you still trying to manufacture these guys as if these are going to be all-time greats? They're not. This is just a business model. Who left 40 year old? Yeah, it's just, it's not a good look. Vladimir, nearly 42. Yeah. It, get, it no. gets worse. I mean, look at Dillian's. Lucas Brown, Malcolm Tan, Marius Vak, Povetkin. And he eventually he got caught out by an older guy. The others didn't have as much in the locker as Povetkin. I mean, are we going to keep seeing recycled men over 40? Is that what we're going to see? What next? In another 15, 20 years, we're going to have 50-year-olds coming back. It's Joshua. Well, we've, we've had that already. Yeah, we've got Well, I'm on about in proper title fights, though, not exhibitions. You know what, Russ? I know this is going to sound out of the box. I actually wouldn't mind watching Joshua fight Preza Kendo. And, and I know people go, what? And they, now everyone's going to go and Google Preza Kendo. But if you remember, Preza Kendo still has a mandatory shot at the WBA whenever he wants it. Yeah. I'd quite like to see that just for the story, just for that backstory that you've got this 47-year-old guy who's been sat on this lottery ticket for years and now he's cashing it in. I, I, that I'd pay pay-per-view money for, even if it was terrible. I'd be like, you know what? I quite like that story. But Pulev, I just, I've, I haven't cared about Pulev. He was lucky against Chisora. He was lucky against Fury. And he was terrible against Joshua. I've had uh, somebody email me say, what, saying what you just said about that, but saying that Trevor Bryant is an option if there's any problems with WBA with anybody for a, for a manager. Trevor Bryant, I mean, could, 
could Eddie sell that and Don King? Would that be just taking it too far, Joshua versus Brian? So we need to be very careful here because Brian's a Don King fighter. Like Christopher Lovejoy was and probably still is. Yeah. So, so Don King's going to want to time his moment perfectly. Don's in no rush because Don King still controls those governing bodies because he knows where all the bodies are buried. Yeah, yeah, in Vegas, in desert. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Don King will keep Trevor Bryant there till Joshua looks a little more vulnerable. Then he'll pick his moment. There's no rush with Trevor Bryant. Yeah. Where do you think all this leaves people like Joe Joyce? I mean, nobody seems to call him out, do they? Well, everyone's just, they're trying to live, Porky. You know, <laughs> you're trying to prolong your career. Joe Joyce will take years off your career. So you that Joe Joyce against Joshua now is a 50-50? If they fought next, Terry, in six months from now, is that a 50-50? Ah, it's, ah, it's a 60-40 in Joyce's favour. Never. Is that how I would yeah. rate him? No, 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 Russ. Stars make fights. Yeah. So for me, if you look at what Josh is trying to do, he's trying to keep it long. And if you don't believe me, go back and look at his gloves. Look at how look at how fat the knuckles were on his gloves. It's almost like they tried to pad it out to give him an extra inch and a half so he didn't have to engage, which I found interesting. So if you go back and look at the gloves, the gloves look huge for 10-ounce gloves. Yeah. Now... Joe Joyce is the same height as you. And he's a big man and he's got a solid chin. But the thing about Joe is he's going to get to you. Yeah. So how many of those shots that Dubois had to take is Joshua going to take? And Joyce is going to hit him with both hands, not just a jab. So style-wise, I think Joyce is all wrong for Joshua because you need stamina to go up against Joe Joyce. And that's the one thing Joshua hasn't got. Dave Allen said something a few months ago. He said when he sparred Joshua, because he'd done a lot of rounds with Joshua and Joyce, he said he found Joshua couldn't bully him in the clinchers. But when he, when he sparred Joyce, he said Joyce were, were moving him about where he wanted to, but Joyce also couldn't be bullied by Joshua. He were like in charge of the clinchers, you know, the walking and that. <laughs> Do you? He's no one realizes Joyce, how... isn't it? <coughs> Joyce's he... physique doesn't look as strong as Joshua's, does it? But Dave Allen said Joshua, he felt that he was hollow. Nah, I don't know what that means. Dave, Dave talks a lot. Man. I think the reality, the difference between the two is Joe Joyce isn't manufactured. Yeah. They haven't had to put him in a laboratory and feed him, you know, prime cuts of goat meat and stuff like that. They haven't had to do that. <coughs> because Joe, Joe's. Joe has a freaky physique, Russ. Like having having known Joe for a long time, his wrists are huge, his hands are huge. He, it's it's like he's got gigantism. You know where you get that growth hormone thing where your yeah. bones are just thick. So that's why if you look at him, imagine Joshua trying to do a backflip or trying to do that capoeira stuff. Joyce does. Joyce is just a naturally big man, and he's mobile with it. Yeah. That's that's like that's like Joshua's nightmare. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even when people tell me, oh, I think Joshua would knock out Wilder, and I say, do they realise that Wilder's not a come-forward fighter? Wilder is a back-foot guy. Wilder will just stay on the back foot, even if it costs him rounds, until you tire, and then he'll knock you out. And based on what we've seen from the last two fights of Joshua, Joshua's not a come-forward guy either. So this notion that Joshua's going to knock Wilder out, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go next with Joshua and how serious they are, isn't it? Look, so you're going to hear a lot of talk about the Fury fight being made, and then it will conveniently break down because they can't agree on whether people should be wearing red or blue gloves. You know, it'll be that sort of nonsense, and then everyone will act like they tried their best and oh, we couldn't make it happen. And then do you know what they'll tell you? Oh, at least he's going to do his mandatory against Usyk. And then we'll end up with Joshua fighting David Price. David Price? How are they going to dig him up? Maybe. 
he's still a, I mean, he's still a valuable name. And Johnny Nelson will tell you David Price has the punch to stop Joshua dead in his tracks. Come on, the cat David Price has just lost to Cesaro last year. Hey, what, look, you're, you're telling me they can't just rehash him, put him in with a guy like Robert Hellenius, and then uh, put him in with someone like Otto Allen, and then go right now he's ready for Joshua. They can do that by the summer. Yeah. That's how sad boxing's become, and boxing fans have allowed this to happen. They can't yeah. be upset because they allowed it to happen. Where are we now in boxing with this boxing's booming and all this and the heavyweight divisions, the blue ribbon division and rough, tough, rugged, rugged, rugged. <laughs> Adam Spy. I mean, Adam Smith's the only man you I know that could turn a boxing match into like. A, co- a cooking uh, program with Nigella Lawson, added spice, sizzling, you know, or body shots. He turns them into uh, uh, investing in an icer at Barclays Bank, doesn't he? <laughs> Those body shots will pay dividends later, Matt. No, you love this, don't you? Because what, what was it me? Because I was messaging you throughout the night, wasn't I? With, with yeah. like Adam Smith bingo. <laughs> Adam Smith bingo, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Adam Smith. We like you, really. We couldn't cope without him, could we, Terry? I like him on commentary. Like it, it would be weird unless they got Nick Helen back or or Ian Dark. Then you'd have to go old school and get like Ian Dark and Jim Watt back. I think I'd enjoy that. But apart from that, Adam Smith's all right. Yeah. Uh, so where do you think Joshua's gone wrong exactly? Then, or do you just think he isn't as talented as we make make out? He's just somebody that looks the part and can be the poster boy for health and fitness and stuff like that and make everybody a lot of money around him. But do you feel that Eddie Hearn's comments on the Thursday before the fight saying, look, Anthony Joshua's learning on the job. Is that out of order? Because he's charging £25, but this is a guy learning on the job in his 11th pay-per-view and his 10th world title fight. How can he be learning on the job, Terry? We can't be paying for people on work experience. Like that's just the, that's just the way of the world. We just wouldn't, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to go into the top Harley Street clinics and pay top whack for someone to tell me, well, we've got a lad here on work experience and he's going to give you your botox. Like, nah, nah, not for what I've paid. Yeah. You know, let him go somewhere else. So I think the problem you've got with Joshua is they spun the fans a narrative that they bought into. So it's it's their fault entirely for being suckered into this. Yeah. Anthony Joshua came up in an era where there were no challenges, right? So as an amateur, his biggest threat was a guy called Dominic Akinladi, who's a good mate of mine. But Dom was never really... Dom, Dom's not a killer. He's one of the best boxers I've ever seen as a heavyweight. The best technician, the best mover, but he's not a, he's not a killer. You have to be a killer at that level. Now, he, that's who he had to go through to win the ABAs. Yeah. There was no one at GB at that time of any quality. It was just him and Fraser Clark. Joe Joyce was still coming up. It was still like a year or two early for Joe. You see? So now you show up at the Olympics and it's your home Olympics and there are allegations of corruption and that judges were paid to make sure that certain people got their medals. These are allegations, but I think this is all coming out now. And it's, it's been historically shown that at home Olympics, they're just proportionate numbers of medals. And Josh you got lucky against Savon. I thought that was a pretty disgusting decision against Savon. And you got lucky against Camarelli. And there was a couple of bumps in the road along the way. So up until he wins the gold medal, he's been really, really lucky. Do you think that Tyson then, Fury's comments about Joshua only beating the Chinaman out of the four fights at the Olympic is correct? Yeah, believable. And look, they're trying to manufacture that Chinese guy now, right? They're trying to build him up. Because they realise Joshua needs these kind of storybook fights. Yeah. Right? So they're trying to build him up because there's money in that. So so then you get to Joshua's pro career. And at British level, who was there? Dillian was still on a band. So who was there at British level? Nobody. So he was able to just rise pretty quickly. And if you go back to when Fury won the, the belt against Klitschko, when he won that belt, well, all the belts, if you remember, Eddie was like, we're going to go the WBC route. Remember, 
Yeah, and then we're going to avoid Fury. Wild as mandatory, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, he was like, "Look, we're going to we're going to we're going to leave Fury. Congratulations to Tyson. He's going to do his thing. He's too boring. He doesn't put excite people. Yada yada yada. We're going to go after Wilder. That's what they said, right? We're going to go after Wilder until the belts were stripped of Fury, and they got lucky again that it was Charles Martin that had the belt. If ever there's been a least deserving champion than Charles Martin, tell me who. Hey, so you win that belt. And then you go, okay, the WBA is now vacant. And you manufacture a fight against the guy who's been on the beach for a year and a half. And then to get your third belt, you fight quite possibly the most mediocre heavyweight there is in Joseph Parker. After Martin. I think Martin beats Joseph Parker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's not even a hard fight for, for Charles Martin. He beats him. And so you've won your belt beating guys that Chisora could have won the, those three fights. Yeah. You still haven't been tested. And then you give us this run of Brazil, Molina, um, Povetkin, Takam, all this dross until Andy Ruiz upsets the apple card and goes, nah, 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 nah. I want some of that money. And then he lost his head. Joshua hasn't put himself in harm's way yet, as far as I'm concerned. It's all been very calculated. You know, like a like a business school project. And that's what annoys me about all of this, Russ, is that it feels like a business school project when I want it to feel like a boxing project. Yeah. Put him in harm's way. Because if you tell me now Josh is going to fight Deontay Wilder the second half of next year, I don't care if he loses. I don't care if he wins. I'm going to respect him for putting his nuts on the line. Same with Fury. We, and you, let's agree on this, Russ. We don't care who wins or who loses no. when the big boys fight each other. We just want it to happen and we want them to entertain. And then whoever wins, wins. If, need, if a rematch is needed, let's do that too. We will support that. But what we can't support is you telling us Josh is an all-time great and he's had a whole career fighting B-level fighters. No, I can't buy that. I don't buy that Sky one where they, they were doing photo shoots and putting him in scenarios like Muhammad Ali and things like that. And then saying it, they were putting him in Ali Ali's bracket. I couldn't I couldn't get my head around that trying to make out. And I think when he came out and did that Black Lives Matter speech, uh, well, I'll let you speak about that because it was something that Ali had do something like that. I'll, I'll let you. How do you think that came out to? Because whatever I say, it's gonna it's it's gonna be picked upon. So you, you'll give me your opinion on that. Okay, so. Anthony Joshua's a black guy in Watford. I imagine he's swallowed a fair share of racism. If he wants to speak about it, it's well within his right to do so. Yeah. Right? When he made that speech, I was like, that's his view. Fair play. If that's what Anthony Joshua thinks, at least he's got the balls to stand up and say it and take the criticism. Yeah. Do you know what upset me, Russ? Is when he backtracked in this fight week, when they asked him about the knee, and he stopped talking about Black Lives Matter and he was like, I need to do something for all the British people. And he moved to an all lives matter approach. Yeah. And it's like, now that's what we're into like, who's the real Femi, who's the fake Femi? Yeah. Yeah. Pick a side and stick to it. Now, we all agree all lives matter, right? No, no one's going to dispute that. Like, I, I care about you. I care about little Reggie. I care, I mean, I care about you and your family, Russ. Yeah. Your life matters to me. Your lives matter to me. Yeah. You know, there, there, there are people listening here who might be going through hard times and I care about them. I don't care what race they are. But I'll be brutally honest and I'll tell you, being black in this country is pretty damn hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard because I'll just give you an example. I had a girlfriend once and her dad used to work for a bank called BZW, which then merged into Barclays. Like they're, they're millionaires many times over. And I go to this house, right? And it's in Holland Park. It's it's got to be a it's like twenty million quid now for that house. Jesus, Russ. So I go there. And I'm just a, I'm just a kid. My family don't have much. I mean, like we barely made it to the end of the month and stuff like that. And I show up, and I've got my Moss Brothers suit on, right? <laughs> and they're all asking me this stuff like, "Who's your tailor?" So I don't have a tailor. I, don't, I can't afford that. And you're in there and they're asking you, like, can you get drugs and can you do this? Can you do that? A phone goes missing, Russ, and my pockets have to be turned out. Just me, by the way. And you're in this house. You're like, Jesus Christ, the pressure you're under to 
to figure out what's going on and to adapt to a world that you're not used to. Yeah. And to have people say disparaging things and they're surprised that you can put words together. They're surprised that you've got A-levels. They're surprised that you have aspirations to be a lawyer and stuff like that. They're things that not a lot of people have to go through. And they take their toll. The, the first time, yeah, whatever. The 50th time, the 100th time, it's a lot. So I can understand why Joshua would want to say that. But you've got to be consistent. Don't try and be a hero for one crowd and be a hero for another crowd. Like, then we neither of us believe you. So right now, I'm like, we're back to saying Joshua's fake again. Do you believe that Joshua did that? Because that's how he felt, he felt strongly about it. And because he's surrounded by a lot of black fellas and that he did it. But do you think he then got the phone call from the people that are team Joshua, the white people, saying, what are you fucking doing? You can't do that. You're going to have to put this right. And do you think he then did the Google advert thing to say, look, shopping all these shops, white people, Chinese people, Pakistani people, do you think he did all that to correct that he said just buy from black people's shops? Do you think? Or did I put that right? Okay, so, so let's just be clear about what was said. And, and I know this because I've spoken to guys in Team Joshua. He wasn't saying just buying black people's shops. What he was basically saying was... Oh, right. Sorry, that I got it wrong. No, 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 no. What he was saying was support your community. So, yeah. Russ, let me give you an example. Let's say you go back to selling cars again. Yeah. Why am I going to go to someone else to get me a car when I can go, Russ, listen, I need an SL63 AMG on a <laughs> 2009 plate. Yeah. Right? I'm going to come to you. Yeah. Because I want to see you do well. That doesn't mean I don't want to see anyone else do well, but I'm closer to you. Yeah. And if we can't help each other, who's going to help us? Yeah. Once we get to a certain point where we've helped each other, we're going to broaden that out so that everyone benefits. And you and I talk about this, right? Where we talk about if we ever got into boxing, like we'd have to hustle hard, but at some point we want to make sure that everyone eats. We don't say we want that person to eat and not that person. But what you can't have is you can't, you can't have this view that Josh was anti-white people. No one's anti-white people for fuck's sake. And I wish people would understand this. Because I want to help someone who may look like me, it doesn't mean that I hate people that don't look like me. It's me just basically saying, you're having a hard time of it. And if I can't help you, I can't expect anyone else to help you. I have enough money to spend with everyone, whatever your skin color is. But sometimes I need to just remember there are people who look like me and have the same pain that I do. And maybe if I help them, they will help me. Yeah. But that, that's not excluding anyone else. Yeah. That's, that's the point that we need to make here. No one's being excluded. Mm. And I think what happened with Joshua was they just said, Anthony, I think it's best you just swerve the whole topic now. Like, you know, it's not worth the aggro. It's not worth the hassle. Like, remember when he did the, the praying thing yeah. in Dubai? Remember had, what happened then? He had a... Uh, what did he have on now? He had some lo logos he on. He had the sunglasses. Remember he had, he had the sunglasses on? He had the sunglasses and the, the headphone beats things on, didn't he? Yeah. And he was in a mosque. He was crazy. A white yeah. blanket, and that, white yeah. blanket yeah. outfit on him, wasn't he? Yeah. Now, now ask yourself, if he's not Muslim, why the hell did Bradford go absolutely crazy on Saturday night when he won? Yeah. They didn't, did they? They know. They, mate, the streets of Bradford went crazy. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. You know, get cars beeping. He went, he went absolutely crazy in Bradford. So Joshua's a Muslim then? Yeah. But why don't he move to Bradford? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> you kill me. They will know where he is then. <laughs> <laughs> now so, so I think Joshua is probably wrestling with these identities about who is he really and we want to know who are you really yeah. because when he does that we will respect him like if, he, if Joshua comes out and says look I'm a Muslim cool you, you give us the fights we want that's irrelevant I'm pro Black Lives Matter cool whatever give us the fights we want we ain't even going to talk about that yeah. but as long as he keeps giving us third rate fourth rate fights we're just going to find reasons to give him a kicking. And where where's Kubrat Pula sit on the, in, in the top ten? I mean, who's his best win? Uh, 
I mean, we all keep hearing stories that is this roadman gangster and all this. And, and I have met Poole F. And when I were out there, Peter and got on really well with his team and that. And and there's, there'll be a couple of people watching this who, who do text me from Bulgaria. But I heard stories out there that he's Poole F's team, pretty serious people. And if you want to mess about around where he lives, they take you up at mountains and flog you. But where does Pool F sit? Uh, on the where does he sit on the top ten list at the moment? Who's his best win, Terry? It's tricky, right? Because you can't just look at the win column and go, "Is it Chisora? Is it Huey?" Because there's always factors in those where you're like, ah, I don't even know if you can call those wins. They don't feel like proper wins. So where's Poole have been supremely confident late? I have absolutely no idea, to be honest with you. Yeah. What, someone like a Marius back? Really? That doesn't fill me with a lot of joy. Yeah. Yeah, so Poole have's best win, basically, you could say, over a young gun is Yui, but Yui got cut, didn't he, beginning of round two, I think. Yeah. And he were a bad cut as well, and referee kept coming over and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this. And so they had to check, Yui had to change game, game plan, didn't he? Yeah, I, re I remember you were out there. I was sat with next to Dennis. We were sat in uh, media seats. We were like two foot from ring. Closest of nah, you... a ring. What got closer than Pons Forge? I was closer than that. Yeah, the seats where I was sat was the closest I've ever been to a ring as regards watching a fight. Any closer than Pons Ford at Sheffield, closer than anything. We could hear everything. And uh, now, was... if you've got your seconds license, Porky, you know what I mean? They won't let me lose for your seconds license. But <laughs> I felt that. Uh, it was a massive arena, and Poole left treated like a god out there, mate. He's massive out there, honestly. But uh, I, I, he didn't really show me anything to suggest that he were a world beater. And I think you would have beat him if he didn't get caught. But he's got his sent into manager position. But what left a bad taste in my mouth were, if they were that confident he beats Pulef, why did they need a rematch clause? And it's a manager. What's the point in having managers if they're going to put rematch clauses in? It defeats the whole object of earning that to, manager slot. To control the belts, Russ. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem fair, though, does it? To no, but they were, look, the belts, the belts count more than anything else to Team Joshua and to this Joshua project. And that's why you're that's why you're dealing with the stuff you're dealing with. I mean, I've heard a story today that Eddie Earn still wants to keep the WBO, but if they have to drop it, they want to keep it in house if they can. You know what I mean? So what? they still don't want to let go, do they? Yeah, but how are you going to get rid of Joe Joyce unless you exactly. get him into your stable? I don't think they're going to want to put Joe Joyce in Musek. They'd rather just put Joshua in Musek. But if Usek has all of a sudden an injury. And he sits it out. Would they put Joshua with Joe Joyce, or would they vacate? Well, so what's interesting is if you've seen the WBO have said, "Listen, yeah, mandatories exist for a reason, and we will be calling a mandatory." That's because of Frank Warren's hovering about. Do you feel that Usyk's video that he did in Russian, going on about Eddie and His gloves. changing the ring size and the argument over the gloves? Do you think that that's a genuine complaint of how they tried to shaft Usek against Chisora. Uh, Nobody's mentioning this. No YouTubers. And this is why I think Coogan Cassius is a really good interviewer. I think he has, I think he's patient. He's an hard worker. But he hasn't pushed this once regarding Usek's team complaining about the gloves. They're saying stuff were took out of Derek's gloves. I've got the video here on my phone. In fact, I'm going to get this video slotted in at the end of this. I'll, Cam, slot this Ook Pulef, uh, not Pulef, Usek video in at the end of this for fans to watch or after when, when we finish here. So, so I've seen the see video. What's going on because he more or less were hammering Eddie Earn. Uh, yeah, so, Ooks, Usek. So, so the problem is, right, it was the fly sport gloves, wasn't it, that were causing the issue? 
Yeah, but the ring, and, the ring as well, they changed the ring size as well, didn't they? After when they agreed a the size, they changed it, they put a smaller one in, didn't they? Usyk just got on with it, basically. He's a fighting man, didn't he? So I just got on with it. You know, and it, yeah. and it changed his style. He didn't want to get... <clears throat> he was very defensive, I thought. And after the first couple of rounds, he just he took, he took just did what he wanted. But if they tried to cheat, I don't agree with it. I don't agree. Uh, look, uh, it, it, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. And I've always said that we need <laughs> to look at how, how, how the glove situation is managed. I think the gloves should come sealed from the manufacturer and no one should be allowed to open them yeah, exactly. until everyone's in the room. Exactly. Because it looked like it looked like someone had just put those gloves back in some plastic and taped over. Yeah. It genuinely, so you could have just punched like lumps out of the, the padding by then. You could, anything could have happened. You could have scraped out some of the padding. All these sorts of things can happen. And these have been known to happen. And that's why even in sparring, the first thing you do in sparring is you check each other's gloves. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel for Usyk there, uh, and then we obviously we had the Bellew Caldwell cheerleading and screaming for a rematch, this and that, and blah de blah, and, and and they all they tried to shaft Usyk, right? And I I see chinks in the armor with that relationship now, so I'm wondering if there's gonna something gonna go on behind the scenes, whereas. Joe Joyce could be put in as the man and Usyk might wait and then, you know, that kind of thing. And if Joshua vacates, it's Joyce Usyk. And then Frank's back in a, sort of a pole position. You know, he's back in the mix, isn't he? Because he'll be looking yeah. at a way now to get back into contention, Frank, won't he? Because Tyson Fury's parked up. Joshua ain't going to want to fight him, I don't think. So Frank's going to want his slice of cake, isn't he? You think, if he come right? Yeah, look, I, I think the aim is to get two belts. I said it when Wilder had it. Wilder's aim should have always been to get two belts. Yeah. And and the key to doing that is to put pressure on the guys who enforce mandatories. And the guys who enforce mandatories are the WBO and the IBF. You always want to go for the IBF belt because they've called the Pulev mandatory this year. There'll be another mandatory called this time next year. I have no idea who's next in the queue. It might be someone like Charles Martin. I have a feeling it's Charles Martin that's next in the queue for that IBF belt. So yeah. that mandatory will get called. And I promise you, Al Heyman will be making sure that mandatory gets called. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot going off behind the scenes. All this about heavyweight divisions booming. And do you, do you feel that, but it isn't, but do you feel that we're ever going to get an undisputed, or do you think? The powers that be, the sanctioning bodies, the managers, promoters, do you think they're just never going to allow them five belts to all be on show? No, nah, they'll never let someone get that power for us. Not even for one night? Nah. So why don't Joshua say, look, it's impossible to do it. There's too many intangibles. Keep your belts. I'm going to have two fights in Fury, and then I'm going to sail away. Oh, that's assuming Joshua... Is the master of his own destiny, Ross. Do you feel that Joshua can't do that because there's that many people feeding off him, that many ponsors around him? Because let's have it right, they're all ponsors, aren't they, that are around him? A lot no. of them. Okay. So, so think about what it costs, not just in financial terms, but think about what it costs to suppress all the Joshua stories, to suppress the stories about him and Amir Khan's wife and all the other women that he's been with, and all these famous women that Joshua's been with that they've been able to suppress. Yeah. And all the other stuff that's happened with Joshua. These stories build up because Anthony Joshua's that guy. Bear in mind that this is a guy who flouted the lockdown and social distancing thing publicly, and that never made the papers. You mean like motocross? Yeah, remember when they were just out by the shops, just doing whatever they wanted? Mm. I mean, having little picnics and whatnot. So what's clear with Joshua is there's someone, and it's probably Sky, who are just making sure that the media is managed properly. And they're granting favors here and there, and they're doing this and they're doing that. Joshua's hamstrung, and they know they've got him over a barrel. And this is why, you know, when the truth eventually comes out, which hopefully it will do, we'll all just go, oh, so that was what Joshua was like. And I think we'll just grow to love him even more. Mm. 
All right, then. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, he weren't in the bubble. He never had a mask on. He were ringside, and Joshua jumped out the ring after and ran to him. What were all that about? Well, Floyd Mayweather might be the greatest marketer in boxing history, Bus. Think about this, right? A fight happens on Saturday, which is basically Joshua Pulet. But if you really split out the attention gained by people at that event, let's say Joshua got 70% of that. Floyd got the other 30%. Yeah. So Floyd shows up. I'm sure Match would have paid some of the costs of him flying over. Like He doesn't do this out of his own pocket. Like I've seen him doing adverts for these jewelers. People pay him to be here. And I know the guy that that found that uh, Boohoo will be covering some of his costs as well. Joshua's, not Joshua, Mayweather's here on a freebie, takes a bucket load of attention on probably the biggest fight of the year in terms of global eyes being on it. And so Mayweather becomes relevant again because he looks like a kingmaker. He looks like he's anointing his successor. But what he's actually doing is he's promoting his own fight with Logan Paul. Yeah. That's the genius of Mayweather. Mayweather manages to make Joshua's fight really about Mayweather. And I think that's absolute genius. And it goes to show that when they say boxing is booming, no, it's not. Mayweather's still booming because Floyd will make more money fighting Logan Paul than any boxer will make in the next five years. That's the sad state of affairs. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, what about the rest of Eddie Earns' 25 quid pay-per-view, Terry? What did you think of it? Enjoyed the Huey fight. Uh, so I, I came part way through because I was trying to find curry powder, you know, on a Saturday night. That's my glamorous life right now in, love, in December. No, no, it's making curry go. So I needed oh, the you're right. Making I needed, curry. Yeah. So I needed the right powder, like the right brand, you know, the right blend. So when I so as I was walking up, I got told that Huey had been cut. And I was like, what, over the left eye? They're like, yeah. And I was like, Oh, man, not again. But when I got home, I watched it and I saw how he was boxing. Mm. And and fair play to the corner. Like, Peter kept him calm. Uh, who was doing the cuts? Was it Vic Williamson or Kerry Kay? Kerry Kay. Kerry Kay. Now, there's, there, there's a guy who gets away with a lot in boxing, eh? Big um, breaks for Mickey Theo, him, Kerry. Well, maybe he supplies Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> well, well, Mickey would be one of many. But no one talks about that, do they? Because we're not allowed to talk about that. Because Northwestern boxers are all clean, apparently. Hmm. Oh, it'll carry but, on the supplies at NCP. Uh, is it NCP or whatever it's called? CMP. CMP. Uh, what's NCP then? National Car Parks. Oh, yeah, that's it. it CMP uh, Diet Way, in it. That's right. ladies millions. Oh, okay. Okay. Because that's exactly what boxers need, is just loads of protein. That's why. You get a Kerry Casey. Come on. <laughs> but that's a side, it's a side note. Uh, let, let's be honest. They did a fantastic job because I actually thought, why not just make Huey go Southport? Like that might be the safest thing for the eye, just make him go Southport. And towards the end, you could see Huey starting to go Southport um, just so he could see the see the right hand coming better. And I thought he I thought he boxed fantastically well. Huey's still what 25, 26? Yeah. I wouldn't be averse to watching him fight Joshua because I'd like to see how this new risk-averse negative Joshua would cope with someone who's as tall as he is, as mobile as he is, with probably a better jab than he's got. Yeah. I'd like to see that fight, to be honest with you. But for that reason, I don't think we'll ever see it. No. Yeah, interesting. I'm glad Peter uh, was saying to me yesterday that he thought Yui won every round. And I, I tend to agree with him on that. Yeah. I, I thought I think if you take the cutaway, that was a pretty comfortable yeah. fight against Marius Beck. And I know Beck's 40 years old, and maybe Huey shouldn't be in the ring with someone who's 40 years old because we want to see Huey. I want him to fight Parker again. I, I want him to get his revenge, to be honest with you. Let him fight Parker again. What about Dylan White going to going distance with Wack though? A lot of people go the distance with Marius Beck. Like, like you well, sometimes you've got to give some of the stopped. He's never been stopped. I think he has. Oh, has he? I don't think he's been stopped. And well, I'd be surprised if he has. I think, actually, I think Pulev might have stopped him. Oh, don't quote me on that, though. All right. 
Yeah. I'm out, I'm gonna go and check now. Porky's gonna be like, just yeah, yeah, you, you, you have me on Terry. No, I just said, to, I said to Peter, I said, uh, people keep making a big thing about uh, you. He's got to ice him. He said, what can you do when you've been cut? You just got to go to plan B when you get a cut, aren't you? But luckily, you had the experience, didn't you, to deal with it. Whereas against Pool, if he weren't experienced, what he were like a, I don't know, a, a young lad, a lot lighter. He was like a fish out of water. I felt that night. You know, after the yeah, look, oh, pe people who stopped Marius Vac, Povetkin, Jerome Miller, and Martin Bacoli. Oh yeah, he's not been not caught cold though, has he? No, 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 no. I, I don't even think have they even put him down, or did they just kind of overwhelm him? Uh, I said, as he's not, Peter said he's not been iced. Well, no, no, he's never been iced. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be honest, Huey's not an ice man. Let's, let's, let's not pretend otherwise. He's not an ice man. But what Huey does is he's effective. Huey can do the 12. And Huey will make you work for every minute of the fight. Скажи, пожалуйста, это самый длинный лагерь был в твоей жизни? Мне кажется, что он шел 8 месяцев, кстати, честно. Что-то там болело, что-то какие-то, ну там, допустим, травма локтя была. Я боксировал за Львов. Я боксировал 50% Крым, 50% Львов. Скажи, правда ли, что и ты, и Дерек пошли на уступки промоутерам? Ну, полтора, я думаю, сбросил. Может быть, два. И ты достаешь телефон из кармана и... Отмена. I'm no understand me. War, war. I'm gonna know war, peace, war. Мне показалось, что Эдди Хирн был не заинтересован в том, чтобы ты выиграл. Ну, почему нет, конечно. Но он же и твой промоутер. Ну и мой промоутер тоже. Ну, не знаю. Тебе так не показалось? Слушай, это когда кажется, креститься надо. Я вообще, ну, ну хорошо, ну даже если он был заинтересован, многие. Вот я, я просто об этом не говорю. Многие люди были заинтересованы в том, что я проиграл. Ну и что мне думать об этом или что? Мне вообще без разницы. Ну, тебе с, Богу, тебе с этими людьми работать? Да. Все исключительно будет происходить в регламенте труда. Выгодно нам сотрудничать совместно? Отлично. Давайте сотрудничать. Невыгодно? Ну, извините. Почему не заинтересован? Объясняю. Ну, почему мне так показалось? Это размеры ринга. Это не Чесора оказался большим. Вот когда вы только вышли, Таринка оказался маленьким, и перчатки, часоры. Есть видео подтверждение, где Сережа Лапин и Эгис Климас пошли на... за день до боя, да, это происходит. Перчатки, Сереже не дали туда засунуть руку, и когда там, ну, просто жал, там нет поролона, там, на самом деле, этими перчатками, ну, снег с машины надо чистить. Они обратились к Эдди Хир, но он сказал, да, тоже все есть на видео, что наша атлетическая комиссия Разрешила. в Британии разрешает. Да. Вы можете взять такие же перчатки. Так точно. Почему ты не взял такие же перчатки? Почему не начали давить на это? Получается, почти он тебя бил, считай, ну, просто затейпирован. И чуть-чуть кожи на перчатках. Ну, не видела, что перчатки прожимались настолько. <звы> это хитрость. И когда Эдди Хирн сказал на этом же видео, что в таких боксирует Мейвезер, он, наверное, ни одного боя Мейвезера не видел. У Мейвезера там перчатки как. Ну, видишь, перехитрили сами себя, получается, наверное. Или нет? Вопрос хороший. Просто вот бой мне не очень понравился, честно тебе скажу. Почему? Ну, есть причины. Понял. Ну, вот, ну хорошо, ринг. Тебя не удивил, потому что я видел, ну, наверное, это гасиво было. Мне казалось, что тренировочный ринг еще меньше был, чем... Конечно. Там... А, кстати, ринг, который, на котором готовились мы сейчас к поединку, был такой же, как на котором я боксировал. Ну, то есть чуть меньше. Ну, чуть меньше, но... Вы, ты знал, что будет ринг? Когда ты узнал, что будет ринг меньше? Вы же за... Когда зашел туда. А, когда уже после <с песни уже, скажем так. Я, кстати, знаешь, какой момент? Я когда вот так вот стоял в своем углу, как бы и наблюдал, я так посмотрел по сторонам, а, нет, Вов, я же когда с, сидели уже в раздевалке перед боем, я обратил внимание, что канаты какие-то, ну, сильно слабо натянуты. То есть я, знаешь, так, я же там вышел, так, я же как обычно не делаю, а тут я так как-то на канаты начал облокачиваться, посмотреть, что... Проседали чуть-чуть, скажем так. Да, и я заметил, что какой-то ринг достаточно миниатюрный. 
Или уменьшенная версия какая-то. То есть я. Или я думал. Я, вообще я подумал, что это как-то искажает ну, из телевизора. Но когда, тоже показалось, но когда я зашел туда или... вовнутрь и посмотрел, какой передо мной стоит здоровенный Дерек, я думаю, ух ты, ничего себе. Но какой момент? Переписывались по этому поводу с Эдди, и он сказал, что нет, ринг был такой же, как мы боксировали с Белью. То есть... Смотрите, вот после твоего боя, через 2-3 часа я комментировал бой Инуя. Они с Мэлоуни, они потерялись в том ринге. Честно, я видел я этот скажу. поединок, Владимир, я слышал, как они ты... Они боксировали, как будто бы на НСК Олимпийском. У меня вопрос, кто должен решать такие вопросы такого характера, когда не подходят перчатки, маленький ринг? Но за тебя тоже должен кто-то воевать. Это должен быть мен... промоутер. Ну, вообще, ну, вообще это задача, как бы, смотри, Александра У тебя Красюка. там были два твоих промоутера и твой менеджер. Да. Ну, почему так и не поднялся вопрос? Ну, Эдди Хирн свой ответ дал. Он говорит, извините, у нас так принято, можете принимать наши правила, то, что вы и сделали. Это должен делать Красюк, Александр. Я так считаю. Там кто еще? Из моей команды кто-то, то есть, ну, какой-то представитель. То есть, нужно стоять так. Э, знаешь, э, как у нас? Типа, ну давайте не будем типа ссориться там или что-то говорить. Вообще, не, не у меня и не у моей команды, а вообще в общем у нас. Давайте не будем там что-то поднимать. Ну давайте так вот сделаем. Ну, а потом. Хай буде. Хай буде. А потом, типа, в следующий раз. Я считаю, что так не должно. Ну, в следующий раз вот. Э... Не должно так работать максимально. Вот смотри, ситуация, когда. Помнишь ситуацию, когда Тайсон Фьюри пришел на поединок, что-то увидел в ринге, что-то было с рингом, когда бой был Владимира и Тайсона Фьюри. Что-то ему не понравилось. Да, он начал показывать, да, он говорит, все не будет. Да. Все, пошли вон. Я не буду боксировать, все, вот или меняйте, или я не буду боксировать. Все, все поменяли, потому что как бы билеты там проданы, все, ситуация уже как бы за, закрутилась. У нас как-то, ну давайте сейчас сделаем, а потом скажем. Или вот в следующий раз по-другому будем делать. Не знаю. Ну, это как минимум, ну, как бы, должно тебя обижать. Тебя лично. Меня лично? Конечно. Почему? Ну, потому что у тебя есть договоренности, контракты. За тебя никто, ну, не вписывается, давай так скажем. На обиженных воду возят. Ну, хорошо, ты мог из-за этого проиграть. Ну, выиграл же. Ну, мог проиграть. Давай, ну, даже, есть, давай даже не Ну, то есть сейчас мы говорим о том, что... Что могло бы быть из-за того, что просто сказали, давайте вот в следующий раз исправлять, а сейчас не будем. Ну, типа да. Ну вот, пусть даже не из-за ринга, а из-за перчаток. Больно было, но ничего страшного. Это понятно. По бою. Да. Опять же, Александр Усик маленький. На фоне Дерека Чесора ты действительно был маленький. Честное слово. И движение Александра Усика. Движение Александра Усика, да, это ну, концовка. Э, движение Александра Усика и не так много в этом бою. Движений? Да. Ну, да, даже сравнить с, ну, с Гасиевым, наверное, неправильно, потому что там максимально движение было. Ну вот, почему-то этого не было. Вот твои работы ног, уникальности, да, называют же твою уникальную для супер тяжелого веса и тяжелого веса. В этом ты как-то больше принимал на себя, зная, опять же, про перчатки. Наверное. Вот первые два боя вообще были очень, два, два раунда были очень волнительны. Ты знаешь, да. Наверное, даже три. Знаю. Да. Вот хотел бы услышать с твоей стороны. Первые три раунда действительно были волнительные. Я посмотрел, ну куда шагать, пути и все остальное. Э, вообще вся суть в том, что в какой-то момент там после шестого раунда просто две руки закончились. И правая, и левая. Левую ударил там в, в, во втором или в первом. Там, Ты ударил. Да, а локоть как бы там, там на, то блокировался, то раскрывался обратно. Ну потому что как-то так случилось, что вот за, после... за три недели до поединка как-то вот э, так и локоточек забеспокоил там. И опять же ты молчал вот, после истории с Ломаченко. 
Да при чем здесь история или не история? О чем мне, о, о чем мне кричать об этом? Ну, то есть... Не знаю, чтобы выйти в полной, в полной боевой готовности. Ну, если там дискомфорт, там дискомфорт. Ну, надо, может быть, Всевышний нам дает, как бы, силы и путь для того, чтобы мы вышли именно в таком состоянии, в котором мы находимся, для того, чтобы что-то какие-то, что-то понять. Давай так, ты хоть раз выходил на бой, чтобы ничего не болело в профессиональной карьере? Да, практически каждый поединок я выхожу, ничего не болит, просто она начинает болеть или в момент боя, или после поединка. Ну, какие-то там травмы, еще что-то. Сильно бьет Чесона? <связывая> да я бы не сказал, что прям там как-то супер сокрушительно или что-то больно, просто ну чувствуется, конечно чувствуется. А если с крузерами сравнить? Ну давай с Белью. Белью не попал ни разу так вот, как Дерек. У меня один такой вкл-выкл был с Дереком, когда во втором раунде он меня ударил ниже. Ну... Это как бы дело судьи, да, смотреть, ну нафиг он тогда находится там, судья, Это если он не вопрос. сигнализирует. Я, когда он меня ударил ниже, я вот здесь, ну, как бы момент перекрытия, я поднял голову, чтобы отсигнализировать, то есть, ну, чувак, пожалуйста, повнимательнее. И он в этот момент, когда я выровнялся, да, он мне бф, дал еще. Ну, он, получается, все равно прав, надо же боксировать до команды стоп. Конечно, я ничего не говорю, что кто-то, я просто в какой-то момент для себя так, судья... У судьи свои дела, у меня свои просто, ну, мне, я реально почувствовал там, так, когда Дерек дал мне там под глаз, я так, 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 повнимательней, тут, тут, тут. Про рефери, это был мой следующий вопрос, почему вот он не приехал на бой? Что-то, может, случилось? Ну, он был у меня в, в, раздевал, в раздевалке перед поединком, он пришел, он объяснял мне, они как бы, у них вот как клише есть, как они говорят, о том, что когда там в затылок бить нельзя, если я говорю стоп, ты должен сделать шаг назад. Или там когда, если он, не дай бог, там дотронулся третьей частью, да, там колено и задница да. к рингу, ты там должен быть в углу и все остальное. То есть они вот эти заготовленные свои фразочки говорят. Но потом, видать, он опоздал или на электричку, или на, на, на поезд, да, и вот он, его, и, да, уехал, его не было в бою. Опять бы. же, вот, да, англичане, британцы, там, где вообще появился бокс, они как-то не особо начали следовать традициям своим. Нет, Ринг, думаю... перчатки, рефери, опять же, вот к вопросу о херне. Не надо никого обвинять, не надо искать в этом каких-то подвохов. Вот та ситуация, которая была, и тот, так как это сложилось, наверное, в тот момент э, должно быть именно так. Э, у нас есть э, законспектированные вещи, которые мы будем менять, да? То есть это своего рода, ну, какой-то тренинг мы прошли, который обязательно надо поднять в тренировочном лагере и что-то что добавить, что-то убрать. И, и все. Это трудности, которые мы должны пройти, Вов. На них не надо обращать внимания, на них не надо зацикливаться, потому что они могут стать ну, какими-то ключевыми вещами, которые будут останавливать на пути к чему-то. Надо в эту лишние вещи надо отбрасывать и торопиться. Маленькі прикроші не стануть великими халепами. Розумна система безпеки Аякс. Ні проблем, ні клопоту. Смотри, вот увидели мы, ты рассказал про закулисье. Может тогда и не надо уходить от своего действующего промоутера? Ну, в Англии тебя не сильно ждут. Не сильно им интересно, чтобы ты выигрывал. Ты пока не будешь приносить столько денег, как Джошуа. Хотя я смотрю, и наши промоутеры там не особо за тебя впряглись. Посмотрим, может быть и не надо, а может быть и надо. Я же сам как, как промоутер уже. В чем вот основная, я не знаю, как правильно это говорится, возня, я это называю, Усика и К2? 
Есть дата с твоей стороны окончания контракта. Ну, насколько я понимаю, К2 говорит, ну нет, типа, нет у нас даты, у нас там как-то по боям. Ну, насколько я понял, честно, я, тем более, я не видел контракта. Когда? Есть дата 9 ноября со стороны Александра Усика, 9 ноября 2020 года. Когда контракт просто заканчивается, вы жмете руки и расходитесь. Первый поединок я провел 9 ноября 2013 года. Первый профессиональный поединок во Дворце спорта. Да. да. 9 ноября было 7 лет э, с того момента. И получается, что контракт входит в силу. Ну, вообще, то есть мы там подписал я его там раньше, да, но он вообще начинает работать с дня подписания. То есть 9 числа ровно 7 лет было с того момента, как я подписал контракт. В контракте написано, что он не может, контракт не может действовать больше 7 лет. Не, подожди, у тебя, по-моему, было прописано первый раз на 3 года. До чемпионского поединка, нет? Это да. где-то я в интервью в каких-то Да, встречах. это до было, то есть если в течение да. трех лет, если в течение трех лет компания не организует мне поединок за пояс, то он как бы прекращается, да. Если я становлюсь чемпионом мира, оно автоматом, там, оно автоматом продлевается там на поединке уже. Не, на, не по времени, а именно на поединке. Э, то есть на данный момент... Э, это все продлилось, допустим, 7 лет, не может превышать там больше 7 лет, да, но там есть, допустим, по боям, есть э, какие-то вещи, когда э, компания имеет э, как последнее слово, да, после, допустим, окончания контракта, они имеют, э, как бы, у нас там есть время, о котором мы можем поговорить о дальнейшем, Диалога, время да, о дальнейшем сотрудничестве, и у них есть еще... Я не знаю, как она называется, я там увидел. Право... Первоочередное право, Первое чтобы с тобой право, вести да. переговоры. Да. Какая-то компания мне предлагает, к примеру, там, один доллар. Они, а компания моя, которую я представлял, говорит, а мы тебе дадим полтора. О, ну так. Интересно же, да? То есть как-то растет. То есть сейчас э, надо общаться просто со всеми участниками этой э, компании К2. Не, 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 не только с одним, а со всеми, которые участвовали и в начальном э, разговоре. Когда... Один человек это Александр Красюк, остальные это, ну, как минимум, глава промоторской компании или нет? Да. Так точно. У тебя были диалоги с Виталием Владимировичем? Ну, наверное, с Владимиром Владимировичем. С Владимиром Владимировичем мы общались, да, я до поединка, еще весной мы разговаривали, примерно какие-то обговаривали, какие-то... Объясни мне, почему ты не хочешь продлевать? Вот есть какая-то претензия, почему не хочешь? Ведь на самом деле все сложилось. По карьере, опять же, я не знаю, как там по деньгам сложилось или нет, но по карьере прекрасно все сложилось. Там можно многое говорить, там, там суперсерия это не заслуга К2. Ну так сложно. Можно говорить, что... BLU не заслуга. Но на самом деле К2 было все это время. Конечно. А я же, а я же не адресаю. Ну, вот в чем и... твоя претензия? Они, в принципе, элементарно просто. Я просто хочу идти дальше своим путем, так как это делали все. А почему ты не можешь пойти из К2? Ну, потому, потому что не будет Усик там 17 промоушен, а будет К2 промоушен. Получается, что я буду развивать чужую компанию. А ты хочешь уйти от К2 в УСИК-17 промоушен? Он. Ты хочешь представлять я, свою Знаешь, промоушен? что я хочу? Я да. хочу вообще выгодные для себя условия, потому что есть определенное время спортсмена, когда он может ну, там, заработать. То есть я хочу максимально из своей карьеры вытянуть максимум, чтобы потом развиваться в каком-то Ну и честно говоря, этой карьере нету 10-15 лет, правильно? Конечно, нету. Конечно, нету. Если... Компания К2 Promotion в дальнейшем, допустим, вот у нас сейчас заканчивается, закончился контракт, да, к примеру, дает мне какие-то условия лучшие Лучше. для заработка, я продолжу с ними. Почему? Почему нет? У меня все хорошо э, в отношении, ну, с, э, с главными, не с главными, со, в принципе, со всеми К2. То есть все то, что они обещали мне, они, в принципе, сделали, и я с ними пришел там туда, где я сейчас нахожусь. Не, не с кем-то другим. Когда я поехал к Бобу Аруму, Бобу Аруму вообще не интересно было со мной. Типа, ну, такое, ну, то есть, там, еще к кому-то поехал, ну, они как-то так носом юзали. Я помню свое первое, э, ну, когда я подписал контракт с К2 Промоуш, когда у нас было в, в Мандарине, 
Пресс-конференция. Пресс да. да, я помню тогда, как журналисты скептически относились, типа, ну вы тоже вас будут мариновать, то это, ну то есть ну, такие какие-то словечки были такие не очень. О том, что я сказал, я, я тогда сказал, что не переживайте, я отсюда из Украины доберусь и до Америки, и до HBO, там, и, и куда нам надо, мы доберемся. Ну только, ну там, бокс есть, да, там, допустим, а HBO уже... Нету, я имею в виду боксерского HBO, которая так 20 лет или сколько там, больше 20 лет показывала бои. Сейчас уже другие какие-то каналы показывают и все остальное. Так что мне, в принципе, все то, что по карьере как бы шло, у меня... Как я бы... так понимаю, что твоя основная претензия к К2 это контракт, который, например, продлится дальше, но на условиях, там, ну, скажем так, еще 2013 года. В этом плане ничего не меняется? Да. Я не хочу... Давать больше, чем это, ну, допустим, должно. Я максимально хочу выполнить все обязательства, которые передо мной стоят. Неважно, перед кем я их взял. Максимально порядочно выпо выполнить э, свои обязательства. И все. Александр Руси как промоутер. Было 1 августа, громко. И сейчас тишина. Да, сейчас пока тишина. Александр Русик как, как промоутер... Ну, смотри, плащ у тебя уже есть, как у промоутера. Да. Там уже. Смотри, я тебе скажу, Александра Русика как промоутера еще нету. В основном Александр Русик как спортсмен и лицо был, и команда, которая работала первого числа. То есть это, была, это было, было лицо Александра Русика и команда. В дальнейшем, когда ну, я там пересматриваю что-то, там читаю и смотрю, как это все про происходит, на данный момент мы можем провести какой-нибудь поединок, но... Вечер. Вечер, да. Мы можем сделать какой-нибудь вечер, но мы хотим сделать это максимально с какими-то новыми вещами и по-новому. И молодежь, которая вообще никому не известна, которая, которая никто не знает, единицы, то есть 3%. Вот знаешь, когда люди приходят болеть на бокс, там 3% только понимают, что происходит. Все остальное а -а 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 -а, эмоции. Ближе, остальное, дальше, да. левой, правой. Очень хочется, очень хочется такую молодежь вот, дать им то, что они хотят сейчас. Не какие-то вот, есть, допустим, один хороший, на которого 100% пойдут. И есть 5 таких себе. И вот все приходят и ждут одного, а вот эти пять перед ним. А мы хотим сделать два, три, четыре, чтобы просто люди приходили, узнавали. То есть, ну вот, вот что-то, что-то то, что не делают. И основной вопрос в том, что эта история будет продолжаться? Это будет история продолжаться, это новенькое, это то, что родилось. Просто так, так уж получилось, что ну вот мы первого провели, и действительно было так вау. И мы, кстати, не хотели чтобы нам завидовали или мы там кого-то как-то мотивировали. Мы просто, у нас появилась возможность, мы это сделали на данный момент. Я не думаю, что последующие будут ну, такого масштаба, а может и будут и такого масштаба. Но потихонечку, полигонечку мы сценарий пишем. Ну, не в этом году своих, уже, да, наверное, с тем, что в середине ноября. Это, а? уже, это уже следующий Я год. думаю, что в этом году может быть, может не быть, я ну, на точно не знаю, но у нас есть, есть мысли по этому поводу, но сейчас вот э, с тем, что происходит как бы в стране, с, с выходными какими-то локдаунами, еще с чем-то. Ну, в принципе, с пандемией. В принципе, с пандемией. Хочу вернуться к моменту о том, что я просто до меня дошло, ну, как бы вот... Суть того, что ты говоришь, какие претензии к 2 или и, и, и еще чего-то. Самое главное... Ну, это... У меня впечатление, вот мое, да, если вот визуально да. у тебя просто испортились отношения с Красюком и все. С Александром, вот знаешь почему? Потому что вот такая ситуация вот с перчатками, с рингом и все остальное, когда должен человек воевать, они просто э, понравятся всем. Вот и в первую очередь той стороне. Вот из-за этого, наверное, у меня больше такой вот, э, знаешь, шаг назад. То есть мои ребята, моя команда, вот все, кто возле меня, кого ты знаешь, они как бы стартуют до конца, и они не, не всем нравятся. Мне некоторые говорят, блин, они вот такие, потому что они, ну, они в мою пользу хотят сделать лучше. Будет лучше мне, будет лучше им. А им без разницы, что там вокруг у кого. Они на моей стороне. 
И они топят за это, и они это делают. И для кого-то они плохие. И мне кто-то говорит, вот они, они на, них, на, на них жалуются. А мне очень кайфа, когда они на них жалуются. А я их обнимаю и говорю, братики, спасибо вам за ваш труд, то, что вы делаете. И они же принимают эту гадость. На них же это говорят и какие-то вещи говорят. То есть я считаю, что... Знаешь, как мы показываем это в общем? Вот давай покажем всем, как у нас хорошо, а когда мы при, придем домой, мы увидим, как у нас капец э, 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 гамняна. Надо сделать, чтобы дома было хорошо, а то, что они думают о нас, это уже их проблемы. Я хочу жить по принципу англичан. Они делают для себя хорошо. На а, будущее. А для окружающих, ну, друзья, хотите, чтобы у вас хорошо было, делайте и для себя хорошо. Мы, у нас как бы все нормально, мы делаем для себя. Вот они делают для себя. Так вот, вот эта ситуация, когда там перчатки, проходы и все остальное, все состоит из мелочей. Ничего не состоит из крупного. Минус, 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 минус. В итоге что? Охрененный минус. Плюс, 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 плюс. В итоге охрененный плюс. Ну подожди, неужели не было за 7 лет, когда Красюк повоевал? Вот в каких-то моментах? То, чего я не могу знать, мы не можем знать. Да, наверное, были. Москва, Трудно. например. Вот тот финал. Там, я насколько знаю, много переговоров было, много людей участвовало. И к итогу не пришли. Ну не будем мы вспоминать Москву. Элементарная вещь, бой с Хуком, я не наговариваю. Алекс, не подумай, все нормально. Бой с Хуком должен был состояться в Киеве. Ну И... тут тяжело Красюка обвинять. Да я что, его виню или что? Ну хорошо, даже К2 тяжело обвинить. Но наши люди не пойдут за такие деньги смотреть бокс. Ну такая у нас пока страна. Я у него просто спрашивал за этот бой. Изначально были разговоры о том, что этот бой мог, могут провести на НСК Олимпийским. Нет, на в стадионе Лобановского в Динамо. Хорошо, на Лобановского в Динамо, во Львове, неважно где. Первые сиденья всегда покупают, неважно сколько. Люди приходят показать свое лицо. У них есть деньги, и они специально приходят показывать свое лицо. Все вот эти випки там... Сколько, скажи мне, пожалуйста, сколько в Германии стоил э, билет впереди? Э, на... Когда я боксировал Хука. с Хуком. Без понятия. Ну, я думаю, ну, пару тысяч евро, наверное. Завязываю, Володен. Такого в жизни никогда не было в Германии. Мало или много? Да, это много. Я думаю, что максимум билет стоил там 400 евро, 500. Это максимум. С Хуком. Ты что, немцы, думаешь, будут платить подвушки? Ну, думаю, да. Вот точно не знаю, но я думаю, что в Москве... Сколько? 400 евро, ты говоришь? Я думаю, что да. Ну, в гривнах. Первые ряды, ну, в Киеве я сомневаюсь. Ну, хотя первые ряды бы пришли, наверное, а за такие деньги. А ты что, пришли бы за зажиточные буратино, пришли бы, посмотри по, по Киеву, поезди, какие тачки у нас. Ну, 223 или какой, вот Мерседес. В Германии их нет, он уже у нас ездит по Киеву. Если уходить, куда? Кому? Ну, там я тебе могу перечислить матч Рум, Топ Ранг, Голден Бой. Может, там даже кого-то, Квинсбери какой-то, в Британии. Усик 17 промоушен, прекрасно. Можно, э, к примеру, когда... Хорошо, давай даже так, подъезжали уже к тебе с предложениями. Мы там слышали, у тебя контракт заканчивается, давай, может. Нет, не подъезжали, потому что я об этом как бы, ну, нигде там в какой-то английской прессе или где-то в Америке не говорил, о том, что у меня там заканчивается контракт, вот давайте подъезжайте ко мне. Я думаю, что если, к примеру, теоретически, ну, все, вот мы там э, разошлись, э, дать как бы клич о том, что это как бы свободный агент, то я думаю, что-то, ну, оживится и будет, будет заинтересовано. Я думаю, что Эдик заинтересован в общении, там, э, в, в продолжении сотрудничества. Еще кто-то, ну... Вот ты говоришь, знаю. Эдик, вот он ведет себя немножко вызывающе, да, потому что он через прессу говорит, мы попросим Александра Усика об отсрочке чемпионского боя, это заигрывание. Это уже понятно, что он попросит тебя об отсрочке боя. Что ты ему ответишь? Я даже так схему вижу, да, вот то, что я почитал, как это может быть, и посчитал. Они у тебя просят отсрочки, Джошуа боксирует с Фьюри, Тебе дают э, бой за титул временного чемпиона, э, ну, бой за да, временного mm -hmm. чемпиона с э, там Джозеф Паркер. Вы боксируете, дай бог, ты выигрываешь, боксирует Джошуа с э, Фьюри, 
кто-то из них выиграет, на следующий день у них отбирают WBO, и ты становишься чемпионом мира. Вот это, может, вообще... это, может, это я сейчас подсказал Эдди Хирну, не знаю. Не вот... знаю, вот ты сейчас такую схему, короче, запутал, я вообще даже об этом не думаю. Вот серьезно не думаю. Но ты имеешь право не разрешить проводить бой Джошуа Фьюрин, как не разрешить проводить бой за ну, короче, титул абсолюта. Да. Нагадить, Забрать? нагадить за это. Почему нагадить? Ты имеешь право, ты обязательно претендент да. год или два. Да. Ну, после суперсерии. Да. Какие твои дальнейшие действия? Я хочу буксировать за чемпионский пояс. В следующем поединке? Так точно. Если они хотят побоксировать, пускай боксируют, но пускай пояс оставят и, и боксируют там. Э, без WBO? Конечно. Ну, я понимаю, что они хотят сделать. Они хотят сделать самую громкую движуху, унификейшн там. И за потом за, с обязательным реваншем. И все остальное. Естественно, ну, я, а я хочу боксировать, как бы, я же ну, на очереди. Ну, давайте как-то будем. Ну, это, сейчас это, буду давить это. на твое благодушие. Вот, опять же, разреши нам провести бой, это такой подкат, ну, который ну, читается, пока, правда. Пока ко мне за этим ни, ни, никто не обращался, ну, давайте будем говорить. Оставляйте пояс, идите, боксируйте, куда хотите. Давайте разговаривать. Эта позиция не изменится. Надо боксировать, за пояс надо боксировать. Я что же хочу за, абсолют, за абсолютного побоксировать? Понятно, они там, ну, нормально кэш заработают, как бы. Надо думать, не знаю. Хорошо, если тебе предложат стать чемпионом мира без боя. Ну, так скажу, да, держи WBO. Зачем мне это? В чем смысл? Я и так чемпион мира. А что, не чемпион мира? По любителям чемпионов? По любителям, Чемпион. конечно. Крузер Уэйд. Все. Олимпийский. Олимпийский чемпион, чемпион мира, все. То есть у нас как-то говорят в прошедшем времени, да? Ну, то есть если ты отец, то ты уже отец. Ну правильно? Ты же зачем-то сделал шаг в да. heavyweight, чтобы в другой весовой обнулился, категории, да, обнулился, чтобы в другой весовой категории подтвердить статус чемпионства. Все. Ну я же все чемпион мира только в другой весовой категории, чуть выше. Хорошо, давай последнее про пояса. Ты просто хочешь стать чемпионом мира по WBO, или ты хочешь этот пояс забрать именно у Энтони Джош? Именно у Энтони Джоша, конечно. Именно у Тэн Джоши. А потом у него же еще есть пояса. Или он их не будет ставить на кон. Ну там как-то движение. Вообще нет. как бы все интересуют пояса. Просто WBO это провокатор, из-за которого можно это все как бы сделать. Сань, теперь э, от бокса к одежде твоей. Ты промоутер, дизайнер. Вот э, перед боем вышла коллекция, да, это правильно да. называть, э, максимально украинизована. Как Если... это вообще выглядит? Тебе приносят готовое, вот выбери, или ты можешь там я сам могу... что-то поднакинуть? Мы... Я поднакидываю, я участвую. Я прям участвую там в каких-то мелких деталях с... со шнурочками, с буковками, там, с цветами. Это вид бизнеса или это вид еще и самовыражения? Вот, ну, одежды. на данный момент... Ну, это... ты же тряпочник. Ну, да. Это самовыражение, это... Бизнес, ну, чуть-чуть, мы, мы, мы над этом, на, на, на этом учимся. И все те ребята, которые работают, и команды, кто этим занимается, то есть это мы чуть-чуть мы учимся. И на самом деле, если бы я хотел нравиться абсолютно всем, то я бы делал какие-то вещи, которые не делаю, например, да. Вот именно конкретно я говорил бы о каких-то вещах больше и, и обо всем, обо всем, о том, о том, о том, о том, о том чтобы вот понравиться как бы всем участникам э, мира. Но я не жду признания от людей, я уже это говорил, то есть оно, оно обманчиво, потому что те люди, которые тебя возносят на трон, они как бы будут и ликовать э, отрубленной голове твоей. Так что ну, надо просто по-настоящему жить и все. Но хитрости должны быть. Сонзы. Искусство войны. Бам, бам. К боксу. Э -э Василий Ломаченко проиграл. Мы с тобой были на связи во время этого боя. Наверное, самое тяжелое, что я комментировал. Почему Вася проиграл? Ряд причин этому есть. 
э, куда-то окунаться в это. Я очень был расстроен этим. Я прям неделю я так об этом думал. И зная Василия Анатольевича, как он, сколько он шел к этому и все остальное. Есть э, этому какие-то причины копаться в этом и э, искать какие-то причины. Я думаю, что это лишнее. Просто надо вот, принять то, как произошло. Выходить оттуда и, и идти дальше. Ты веришь в реванш? Ну, в сторону Лопеса, что Лопес... Я сыграл. вообще в некоторые такие вещи верю, что если бы я когда сказал об этом человеку, они бы сказали, ну ты больной вообще. А я же вправду чуть-чуть нездоровый, да? Так что я, я в это верю. Это интересно. Это, вот на самом деле это очень интересно как бы с финансовой точки зрения раскрутить. Потому что вот то, что сейчас там происходит, с моей точки зрения, там, буду боксировать с Дэвисом, там, или с Хейни, или с Гарсией, это тоже не так просто все. Эти все ребята находятся в разных э, э, компаниях. И с, сделать этот поединок, то есть сейчас Лопес э, думает, я сейчас прям ярды буду зарабатывать. Да? Я, кстати, тоже думал, стану абсолютно чемпионом мира, прям вообще капец ко не мне. Так? Нет, это не так, Владимир, это на самом деле не так. И очень хотелось бы, конечно, посмотреть э, э, реванш. И я думаю, что будет реванш. Вопрос, который мучил меня, когда я уже узнал о плече, почему не отменить бой? Это характер, это вот... Можно вот сделать так... шаг назад, чтобы потом сделать три шага вперед. Я понимаю, что все Можно. эти вопросы к Васе. Ну вот этот, вот этот мужик, просто сумасшедший со своими вот э, тараканами в голове и все остальное, вот это... Вот это и есть, наверное, вот в этом и есть и проявляется воинство какое-то, характер и все остальное. То есть, несмотря на какие-то проблемы, я, я исключительно говорю, это вот наш ментал какой-то. То есть, можно действительно сделать шаг назад, по, посмотреть, какая ситуация, чтобы потом оттолкнуться и сделать вперед. Но не знаю, я как бы не сильно не углублялся в это, и у него об этом не интересовался. Не очень хотелось бы ворошить это как-то, знаешь, и не знаю. Как вот поддерживать, кого тяжелее поддерживать, кума, коллегу по цеху или такого же чемпиона, как ты? Вот ты со стороны кого? Кума разговаривал после боя? Да, я с ним разговаривал как вот с другом. Мне очень хотелось, ну вот, просто услышать его, как я не о боксе не спрашивал, ничего, вот плечо, как там состояние, то есть мы пару дней назад тоже разговаривали с плечиком, где нормально все там развивает, делает э, реабилитация, эти все побаливает там что-то, ну, оно как-то, оно цепляет всех, мою команду и меня, так это точно, то есть у меня он не неделю, я реально вот ходил после поединка и об этом думал, так что... А тебя поражение. Знаешь, вот я на данный момент, я уже потом себе так в голове, э, все слава богу, он живой, он вернулся домой, дети, супруга, родители, папа, ну то есть все вообще, если с точки зрения жизни говорить, все слава богу. Это мечта. Значит, она осталась. Я выложил э, стихотворение Пастернака, да, мне очень оно симпатизирует. У нас, знаешь, какой-то момент такой, а знаешь, что очень сильно обидно, что когда человек, я, кстати, можно перечислю, э, чемпион Европы по кадетам, чемпион мира по юниорам, э, двукратный чемпион Европы. Чемпион Украины, наверное, надо было начать, да? Чемпион Украины стократный, это мы, да, мы, я говорю, регалии, которые были с поднятием флага и с э, тем, что человек как бы прославляет э, город, дом, клуб, страну, то есть я говорю, двукратный чемпион Европы по взрослым, двукратный чемпион мира по взрослым, двукратный олимпийский чемпион, там турниры, кубки и все это остальное, там в трех весовых категориях чемпион чемпионов, по атаманам повыигрывал, то есть вот эти все, э, все эмоции, крутость эту, то есть человек приносил каждому, 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 а тут ну, человек проиграл и все, да, и погналось вообще. Большинство, на самом деле, большинство просто было и поддерживало. То есть вот эта грязь, она просто выливается. Знаешь, когда ты возьмешь бассейн, да, и, и, и кинешь туда листик, маленький листик, его же видно в бассейне, да, потому что это прозрачно. То есть вот это примерно такая же ситуация была. Ну, то есть мы забыли, да, 
и все, мы там люди, вот мы там за Лопеса, ну то есть вот человек живет на, пускай он живет в Киеве, хорошо, вот я там за Лопеса. Да, много таких было. Да, я за Лопеса. Это лицемерие. Скажи, одно поражение Васи, вот это поражение Лопеса, может перечеркнуть вот все то, что перечислил ты, все заслуги? Нет, конечно. Как это может произойти? Ничего страшного, ну, поражение от победы ты сам не должен отличать, да? Он э, сильный парень, он э, сейчас э, заживет плечика, продолжит трудиться, и если надо сделать какой-то, ну, там, круг, да, там, пару боев, ну, я считаю, что надо делать. Ну, вот нельзя останавливаться, надо трудиться, а у него с этим все в порядке. Вообще все отлично у него. Как бы с мотивацией и с желанием э, все хорошо. Скажи, а тебя Васина поражение э, немножко опустило на землю? Блин, то я вроде... Опять же, я очень много начал встречать, что вот то, что проиграл, проиграл Ломаченко, чуть-чуть должно опустить Усика на землю, который поймет, что да, вот, кстати, можно проиграть в профессиональном боксе. Так, а я каждый бой... Или ты не взлетал? Я не знаю, я вот сам по себе не могу сказать, но вроде по своим ощущениям я как бы... Не, не по могу... человеческим, по спортивным факторам. Ну, вот даже у, по... меня не было, у меня была такая вера, что вот Вася после солид вообще не может никогда проиграть. Я не знал, как комментировать. Я понимал ближе к концу боя, что ну, как бы придется что-то говорить. Я думаю, что надо, э, ну, допустим, должно мое окружение сказать, как я, ну, если человек где-то начинает летать, он же и с, э, со своим окружением начинает летать, правильно? Не, не, не ну, со всеми. Это жизненно больше. Вот я про спортсмен. Когда ты последний раз проигрывал? В 2009 году на чемпионате мира в Милане. Вот после этого ты свои ощущения помнишь? Ты же начал, наверное, больше тренироваться. Ну, конечно, Немножко ну, дольше ты начал тренироваться. Да, и продолжаем это делать. Ну, и ты не проигрывал с 2009 года, это 11 лет. При этом ты считаешь, что ты не взлетал. Ты не считаешь себя неуязвимым, непобедимым? Э, нет. Нет. Я как-то вот в реальности пытаюсь себя держать. Это возможно. И я думаю, ну не то, что я там думаю об этом каждый день. Нет, я предполагаю, что это действительно возможно. Проигрыш. Но он, он рядом стоит с, с победой. Готовь коня к битве, да? Да. А победа от Всевышнего. You better have, you better be good with cardio. With Joshua's not good with cardio, and if he starts throwing them big arms and missing at you, he's this he, he'll he'll get levered down straight because there'll be no in tank. And that's what happened with Tyson, you know, because he fights loose, doesn't he? They don't force everything, do they? And the, Joshua forces everything, and this is why Frotch he used to force everything. He didn't fight loose, but he had such a good engine he could steam through at end. You know what I mean? Whereas I like, thought Frosch fought pretty loose. Like Frosch would always just have his arms low and he'd be swaying. And then he knew when to turn it up. He says to me, Carl says to me, what he said, every every time I throw that right hand, I want to hammer, I don't want to hurt him. I don't throw it as a throwaway. I wanna I wanna hurt them. I force it. But I just got the impression that he forced every shot. Maybe he might not with left, but he always used to finish like a steam train, didn't he, Frotch? Yeah. And people people don't understand in boxing. Actually, the hard part in boxing is being able to maintain your level in round nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Joshua was Normally, not wanting money yesterday. We're looking for his second win. One, sorry, on Saturday, we're looking for his second win. I felt I didn't need it against Pulev. Pulev was just there to be hit. Like Pulev posed no problems, straight up and down, walked forward in straight lines. It was. It was an easy night for Joshua. He never would if have Pulev, ran Pulev. I don't even think he tried to. Eddie Earn and Johnny Nelson and Bellew and them were all talking about it, it being a 50-50. And, and I thought, well, am I hearing something here or am I not getting this? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh... The hype was out of control, Terry, wasn't it? Yeah, they, they, they find new levels to, to con fans. But remember, Russ, they're not selling it to guys like you and me. They're selling it to, to the crunches. That's who they're selling it to. And they'll buy anything. The cornflake crunches. Is that them a wheat cornflake? Yeah. Crunching up cornflakes with no milk. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, <me. laughs> All right then, if you have water on it, like that film, isn't it, Little Miss Marco, when she really gives up. <laughs> <laughs> she starts eating them. We, we, it's a film from the 50s. She starts eating them. It's called Little Miss Marker, Walter Matto. And this, and I forgot the girl in it who plays her, but she starts eating coffee to no milk. But uh, so we've spoke about Yui against Vark. Yui's higher up rankings now, and he, he, he's nearly back in mix. Uh, I class Yui as Euro level now. Comfortable Euro level, do you? Nah, he's world level. No, yeah, going into world level now. You're going going back. I, I let's see. So who who do we call world level at the moment? Well, Joseph Parker, Povetkin. I think he beats Parker. I think Ortiz. I, he Ortiz might be a bit too much for him. In another twelve months, you would be a favourite in that, wouldn't he? No, no, I think I think Ortiz is too too clever, too He's physical too for seasoned. most people. Two seasons. Yeah. But but if you look at all these other guys floating around, like I see all these guys like like Dillian. You could I'd put Huey in with Dillian. I would I'd have no worries putting him in with Dillian. Dylan White will never call Huey out because they're sparred. And let me tell you this. Dylan White said I don't want to fight Huey ever. Now that was a few years ago now. Maybe Dylan might have come on since then, but since then Dillian's called Huey a crackhead and all sorts of vile insults. But He'll never call Yui out and have a fight with him because he's got one of them styles that Dylan White don't like. Yeah, I like. I like, I'll tell you who Huey reminds me of. He reminds me of Lyndon Arthur. Like when I watched Lyndon Arthur box, there was a lot of Huey Fury in him, in the sense that he's one of the few heavyweights who can jab going backwards. So Huey can jab you, and at the point of impact, he starts to slide back. So even if you try and counter him, you're going to miss. And so you get frustrated with that because Huey knows when to step in and when to step out. He knows when to step around you. There's, he, he's a good technician and he'd be, he'd, be, he'd be a nightmare for a lot of people. I always wonder if he's got the belief in himself because sometimes I watch him and I go, he's retreating into himself. If he really imposed himself on a fight, I think he'd give a lot of people trouble. Yeah. Uh, all right then. What other fight did you like on the show? I can't even remember who was on now. Uh, Akoli. What do you um, think that? That would have I've, always, hey. I've always been a I've always been an Akoli fan, mate. Yeah. Um, I just I think a cruiserweight. He's almost impossible to beat. I, I think all those people waiting to see Lawrence Akoli fail. It's not going to happen. I, I expect him to clean up cruiserweight and move up to heavyweight and do a lot of damage. Because he's strong, you know. All, you know, I've seen him train when he used to train with uh, Brian O'Shaughnessy. He's strong, man. Like everyone who's fired him says the same thing. Lawrence is strong. Yes, he's awkward and ungainly. Get him into that with these strong man tails. He, you're talking like he's Jeff Capes. No, well, no. So there's boxing strong and there's like world strongest man strong. Boxing oh. strong is that. Like you said, with Joe Joyce, he controls what happens in those exchanges, in the clinches. You can't bully him about. Dominic, and then he's always... got a poster of Jeff Capes, you know, in, in his bedroom at home. Is it sticky yet? I don't know about it being sticky, but there's this thing that Dominic Ingle does where he picks his chair up and crushes it. So my mate says, why have you just crushed that chair? I was sat in that. Dominic goes, I saw Jeff Capes do it on World's Strongest Man, you know, warming up. Because <laughs> I remember, do you know, I remember, I, I used to train in Jamie Reeves's gym in Sheffield. Jamie Reeves from Sheffield? Way. Yeah, I used to train in that gym. Yeah. Down by Bramall Lane. Man, Britain's Strongest Man, wasn't he? World's Strongest Man, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he won World one, didn't he, as well, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's when I really got into lifting, was being around that gym. There were some monsters in that place. Yeah, they make Dominic Kingle look like a tadpole them up there, wouldn't they? That's probably where I first met you. You're the guy just pressing that log over your head. With one finger. <laughs> Dominic, Dominic, I know you're watching me, and I just want to say this. If a fourth drug test comes from your gym or you train a fighter, will you hand your licence into British Boxing Board of Control? Come see me, Dom. 
Yeah. All right, then. Moving on. A Coley, I wouldn't open my curtains to watch him, Terry. He's got a shite style. I don't like him. He's big and gangly, and he's an awful, awful to watch. But I know you're his... But he's player. a nice man. But, no, but he's a nice man. He's a nice man. Yeah, because he, yeah, he's like the world's biggest cruiserweight. <laughs> oh, I need to pull you up on this, actually. It's something, actually. Somebody sent me an email. Why is your mate, Terry, saying that Dubois needs to get rid of his corner and and not Anthony Yard get rid of Tunde? Okay. Okay, so I understand very simple terms. I've known Anthony Yard probably for about 10 years now, right? No one gave two shits about Anthony Yard. No one gave two shits about Ahara Davis. Tunde did. And because of Tunde, those guys have careers. Okay? He, he, the way they box is 100% down to Tunde, as far as I'm concerned. And they'd even admit that. Tunde is also the guy that spent his own money taking these kids to Vegas to spark the Mayweather gym. There's videos of it on YouTube if you want to go and watch it. Yeah. Tunde is like an uncle to these guys. There's a familial bond. It's an important bond. So if you take that away from Anthony Yard, you change Anthony Yard as a fighter, okay? Yeah, well, we don't. How do we know that? How do we not know that Martin Bowers, Martin Bowers, and Tony? No, Bowers no, so, no, 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 no. So, so I'm coming to that, Russ. Go, go let me finish sometimes. Well, mate. Oh. Yeah. So now look at Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois is the product of his father's ambition. His dad took him to probably every gym in London: Earlsfield, Palmer's. Uh, Fisher, he went to Fitzroy Lodge for a bit, Dale Youth, Repton. He's been to virtually every gym in London. He sparred all of his contemporaries, right? His dad's done this. That's not Martin Bowers. That's not Tony Bowers. Tony Bowers and those guys came in when the pro journey began, right? So there's not that deep emotional bond. If Daniel Dubois went and trained with Sugar Hill Stewart, it wouldn't make a difference to his life. Because he's still got the people who got him passionate about the sport. His dad, his sister, his brother, his whole family of it. The Bowers, is this, they provide a service. Tunde and Anthony Yard is, is more than that. That's the difference. And I know people go, you're just saying that because they're your mates. No, I'm not. I've said it. If you listen to the episode I made, I think Tunde needs to look at, can he do anything better? Or can he get people to do things better? Tunde's publicly said, look, if someone can help make Anthony Yard a better guy, I am more than happy to bring them in. But they have to be able to make him better. It's not just doing something different. It's about doing something better. Mm. Now, that's... And it seems like an artificial distinction. And the problem is, because I know both sides really well, and I've known Daniel Dubois for about six or seven years, and I've known Anthony Yard for about ten, I've seen the journey, and that's why I can make a different call. But I guess when you're sending an email like that, you kind of just see it in black and white terms. So I get where the guy's coming from. Yeah. All right, then. So you've answered that, then. Uh, uh, so we'll, do, we'll talk. I think there's one more fight we need to talk about on there. Would it the Mar Florian, whatever, Sam Jones? Oh, Florian Marku. And uh, against uh, some... Stuart or someone. I forget the good ah. name now. It's not irrelevant. But do you think that Sam Jones and that guy were right to complain about the decision being a draw? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sympathetic. I of the, of the bits of the fight I saw, I thought Florian was the guy in charge. But look, this is what happens when you leave a referee to judge a fight. Like you just, it's too much risk. And that's effectively affected Marku's career. So for those who don't understand, like Florian Marku came over from Albania where he's, he's a huge star in Albania because I think he, he was like either a kickboxer or an MMA guy. Yeah. And he had a huge following. So all the main gangsters in Albania, is it Tirana, the capital? Yeah. They all love him. So he's just connected. So then he came over here. And when they found out Florian Mark was coming over here, the guy was good for like, like a thousand tickets. Easy. Just do a thousand tickets. 
so all the promoters wanted him. In who did he start? He started off training with. Who did he start? Did he start off with Josh Burnham or did he start with Tony Pill? And then people started nicking him. Like so, I think it's with Don Charles now, and he's been passed around the trainers. But he's self-contained. He, he's his own business, man. Like he's he, he's a he's a star in Albania. He's a star, and over here he's a really good cash cow. So that draw kind of sets him back because I think they're trying to position him for someone like a Conor Ben, and that would have been a hell of a fight. So back to the drawing board, but I'm sure he'll be back soon. You know, he deserves it. All right, then. The, uh, really nice guy. What did you think about the incident the night before in the hotel? What happened in the hotel, Paul? Come on. We, where they were, when he said, come down to room 694 and we'll get at it. So is it Florian or whatever he's called? He went, but do you know what? Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't see any of that way and stuff like on the Friday. I just, they have all passed me by. Well, it, they, obviously, Coogan would have filmed it, didn't he? Corridor, in, in dressing gown. So, so, so Florian Mark was calling out his opponent in the hotel. Yeah, it went, you must have seen it on social media, Terry. I sent you screenshots that Rico sent me where Eddie Ernst said, security, security, and it all sort of like, there were a melee one, there were Don Charles were involved. Uh, <laughs> uh, other, other people were there. So, I mean, somebody said to me that Peter Fury stuck his head out of, out of, his, out of his door and said, get, your, get in your fucking rooms! And there were secu- <laughs> there were fucking fighting men here trying to sleep. Get in your room, you fools! And there were a uh, security <laughs> guy were trying to get him in the room. This is what I'm hearing. But what, what I saw on IFL, the security guy was saying, "Go back to your rooms." So it all sound, it all reminded me of uh, when I was in Blunderston. You know, where you can go out of your room at night. Get in your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Norwich, Norwich, Norwich. When I was down there, letting rip many years ago, but uh, it all, all had that like prison effect feel to it with security guards as like the prison fucking screws, you know what I mean? And Don Charles were, were in the melee, Coogan were there with a camera, there was Sam Jones there, everybody had an opinion on it. And I think I did a video saying it, what, what a load of bollocks. You know, doing that to get to, to just basically, in my opinion, right, doing that is just overkilling and selling a fight. We Can you imagine I'm sat in room at night, oh, we want to fight him. Well, let's, Coogan, can you come out with your camera and be ready when we come out of hotel room? It's just, Coogan comes out of hotel room and catches them leaving the room. It's like it were pretty Coog- Yeah, and Coogan's just, he happens to just have a camera. In middle at night, he's there in his in his skiddy underpants and his uh, his Aldi dressing gown uh, or Tom Sweeney dressing gown, whatever whatever they wear down there in uh, sunny sunny Basildon, and the film in it, and it was just just a bit too muggy for me. It was a bit too cheeky Nando's, you know that kind of carry on. Plot up, we'll be caked in six months. You know all that Essex crap. So, Mate, it's just. <laughs> It, all that stuff is just clown stuff, right? It clown is. stuff, yeah. yeah. So now I do believe that Peter Fury said, get in your fucking rooms. There's fighting men trying to, fighting men trying to sleep here. So, yeah, it probably is true that Peter said that because, trust me, nobody played the music in jail after 10 o'clock at night if Peter Fury wanted an early night. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You'd even screws and tip, t- tiptoe around jail, you know, night clocky. Eh? So, so you know, do it roll count. So, yeah, it probably is true. Peter probably did say, get in your rooms. But you've got idiots there, like, congregating on, on corridors outside people's hotel rooms, wanting to get at it. I mean, what's all that about? I don't even think they did, man. I, 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 fake, like I said, look. Fake knacker, Sam Jones. You're full of shit and you're a scammer. Come see me. Ruin, fucking ruining state of boxing and another thing Sam Jones I know you're watching you ain't even got a fucking border control license so stop promising fighters deals you've not got a border control license you prick well anyway well on that note moving on <laughs> go on what do you think what do you think about we'll move on we'll move on from Eddie's fast what, 
Give it a mark out of ten, the show, for 25 quid's worth of pay-per-view, Terry. Four. I'll give it a two and a half. In other news, water's wet and there was a show on with Mick Hennessy starring Sam Eggington and, and Ashley Theopane. What did you make about that? Oh, mate. They've dug up Both guys Ashley just Theopane. need to stop. Both guys need to stop. Eggington's only just turned 25. This now, they both need to stop. It's just, it's too much now. This is just, it's jobs for the boys. Like, Mick Hennessy on that TV platform could do so much better in terms of just getting people to fight. So I don't know why he's so invested in Sam Eggington. I don't know why people are, man. You know what he, do you know what? Sam Eggington's like, you, you know those women, Russ? Yeah. Who end up, and they end up with like five kids from five different men, right? Yeah. But there'll be a sixth guy who will think he can change it and he'll have a go. And then he'll end up being the sixth dad and then he gets turfed out. And that's what that's what Hennessy's going to be like with Eggington. Eggington will be there and then he'll just, he'll be terrible again and then Mick will just go, nah, this ain't working. You know, I like Mick though, don't you? I like Mick. I like Mick because Mick always seems to give people a chance. Well, but sometimes... You look at the stable and go, come on, Mick, you know, you, you've got a platform here. We, we can get some better names for you than that. Me, Mick, and Dennis ripped it up in Bulgaria. Mick's all right, you know. Mick's yeah, one I, bet I, I, I bet he didn't share his breakfast with you, did he? No, he <laughs> <I> didn't. <laughs> no. Are you going to take piss out of Mick Hennessy fried breakfast now? Nah, no, nah, I just, you know. <laughs> but you, but you couldn't eat one. Well no, well, no, I couldn't go head to head with Henderson. No way. A good bloke, though, Mick. He's a lovable rogue. All right, then. Uh, let me just finish off on this. Is this a conflict of interest? John Pegg trains Sam Eggington, doesn't he? Yeah. He also manages him, I believe. All right. John Pegg matchmaked Mick Ennis's show. Is that a conflict of interest? Or is it John just helping out Mick? Um, okay, so the question is, who gets harmed if John Pegg does all those jobs? Who's actually getting harmed? What do you mean? Because you're saying there's a conflict of interest, but what, what damage is the conflict actually doing? He's just matching fights, isn't he? Yeah, so for me, if, if, if we're saying that John, John basically does everything for Sam Eggington, are we saying that Maybe he gave Sam a soft touch in terms of being on yeah, TV. Yeah, basically, do you think Ashley Theopane, who won a world title challenger, do you think Ashley Theopane, I think, sorry, is Ashley Theopane an easy touch in his 40s for a 25-year-old Sam Eggington? I'd say, yeah. Yeah, he's a small guy. I mean, he's a, he's a light welter. He's basically Sam. a light welter fighting at 154, so that's a stone in weight, isn't it? Plus he's, what, 15-year-old, 16, 17-year-old? Is he 42, yeah. think? 41. 41. No, 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 he's, no, 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 he's 40, he's 40 this year. And I only know that. No, and I only know that because I think he was in the same year at school. As oh, yeah, so there's a 15 year difference. And, and, and obviously the guy's a stone lighter, you know, walking about in on, on the night. Is it, they got on scale the same weight, but there's going to be, they were a stone one at night or something. So. Is that good matchmaking? Is it dangerous matchmaking, putting a 40-year-old who's a stone lighter in with a puncher? I'm not really not really a, Egg, but, but Eggins is not really a puncher, is he? He's more of a grinder. Oh, yeah, he's a grinder then type, yeah. So, yeah. and if you're going to accumulate punishment, and he got the stoppage, and, and it were it were there, is, should that be a headliner on TV? Probably not. Right. You know, and then that's on Mick. It. It, it, but but it's on Mick to to build a stable that is TV friendly. Yeah. 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 And I suppose Eggington's a TV fighter, isn't he? Not in my eyes. He I think were, I think he were then money he were. It's obviously uh, like seven losses it, now, it, it? If if I was Hennessy, I'd be looking at the guys, and you and I have talked about this before. There's a number of guys who are they're too expensive for Eddie Hearn to be using currently, right? The Smith, like the William Smiths of this world, the Callum Johnsons of this world are too expensive for Hearn to be using. 
yeah. because there's no crowd. Hennessy should be tapping those guys up and saying, look, if you want a final run, you know, we'll, we'll get you televised, we'll get you headlining here. And, you know, that might draw you some appeal in the States. He- Mick has an opportunity to really offer a third way instead of just Sky and BT Sport. But whether he wants to or not, that's entirely up to him. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, moving on from Mick's show, then, because there weren't really much else to speak about on that. We'll, uh, move, we'll move on to Big Ron Lyle and Steve Crump's show in Sheffield Arena Car Park. Uh, the Dennis Hobson Fight Academy, it's back. You just can't keep a good guy down, so they say. What, what did you make, it, make of it? I really liked it. And here, here's everyone going to start booing and going, oh, because he's your mate. But if I'm honest with you, Russ, I loved it visually because it felt like Rocky Five. That's what it felt like when I was watching it. Yeah, you got all the cars, you got the lights, you got the, the horns. I'm like, this feels a lot like Rocky Five. And you got Cash Alley walking down to the ring, past the port to lose and whatnot. And I'm just like, wow, this is this is as raw as it gets. And then you then listen, you're like, you're like, Jesus, this is an outdoor event. And you can see the steam coming off the guys when they're boxing. Yeah. And it was, I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching Cash Alley. I really felt for Tommy Frank. Like that was heartbreaking to watch. But do you know what I really loved? And this is when you know someone's a good trainer. So I want to give Glenn Rose his due. When Tommy, when Tommy did his hand in or his arm, do we know what the injury is yet, Russ? No, I haven't really checked, to be honest. But watching Tommy Frank box with one arm, and you could see he was using some of the old Glenn Rhodes tricks, like because I'd seen Glenn do some of that stuff in his fights. And I thought, here's someone who's really invested in training a guy because a lot of boxers would have folded under that pressure. But one-armed Tommy Frank had an approach and he was like, I'm going to use the counter right hand and to defend myself, I'm going to use the cross-handed block like someone like Tim Witherspoon would use and Holyfield used it a lot. And that's a really old school move. So, you know, that kind of just been from like a Ben Davidson. Yeah. So it was good to watch Tommy Frank tough it out for as long as he could. And then Glenn just did the right thing and said, mate, you, you know, you're starting to slow down now. You're going to become a target. I'm going to pull you up for your own good. Just fantastic corner work overall. And it was really dramatic. And, you know, for, for a show in Eurosport, I thought that was a really good show. I enjoyed it. I found it compelling. I thought the production of it was fantastic. Did you? Oh, 100%. I was gutted we weren't there, Russ. We should have gone. Yeah, I could have gone. I could have gone with Eastwood Autos who sponsored me. They, they weren't. They were sending me photographs of them sat in his Rolls Royce. But there's a I lot. think you should have gone. Like, as the voice of hardcore boxing, yeah, there's yeah. a lot. There's a lot going on behind the scenes why I didn't go. But I'm. Hey, I'm hey, Porky. Go. Yeah. You know what we always say about boxing, yeah. What? The most important thing is that we do what's right for the business. Yeah, that's it. And I'm glad that Dennis got his show on because some of the numbers being handed about that I've heard were like they took a loss on it. But you've got to give credit to Steve Crump and Dennis uh, for that. The other things I'll touch on in, in, in another video, but what did you think of people having a pop at the £10,000 in the briefcase, you know, when Kane Salvin, who I said were Dennis's best fighter in his stable, yeah. he is now, in my opinion, and, and people said, eh, shut up, man, nobody had heard anything. I said, he's the best kid that Dennis has got. He is now, anyway. He's the best kid out of Dennis's stable, Kane Salvin. When he fought oh, yeah. Suffy, and there were 10 grand on that table with Fight Academy on inside that briefcase. That's classic Dennis, that, in there. <laughs> Chris couldn't help us, obviously. We all know where the 10 grand went. <laughs> but that were a good little Dennis and Dennis gimmick, that one. It So fair play to uh, to Dennis and Crumpy for that. Uh, what did you think to Punditry? Oh, well, I felt they could have done with me on board, but, you know, that's for next time, I guess. We do better for Dennis that night in our suits and ties compared to ah, Dan McCrory, like he just, felt he just got out of bed, and Dave Allen there in a trackie and a big coat. What all that about? And to be nah, honest, he spoke well, didn't he? He spoke well, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but here's the thing, right? We need to get away from this jobs for the boys thing and just get people on there who are going to give the fans the kind of content they want. Like, that's just my view. You see these guys on Eurosport, 
then they jump on Sky, then they jump on BT, and you're like, mate, it's a bit repetitive. Do you think there were a bit of arse, a bit of arse licking going on, though, in punditry? It's how boxing works, right? Because you want to come back next time, so you've got to toe the company line. doesn't matter if it's Eurosport, Sky, or BT. Maybe that's where I went wrong, then, not towing company line. Russ, sometimes, <laughs> some, but sometimes, you know what? To get to where you want to get to, sometimes you've just got to bite down and, you know, do what needs to be done. Yeah, I've not got that in me, have I? All right, yeah. then. Uh, the, the actual fights, Kane Salvin, well done. He'll win a British title in, but I don't want to see him in a, in a fight with somebody where they're knocking lumps out of each other, 10 rounds, and they're both 5-0, and oh, and it's a very even fight. I don't want to see him in fights like that in his seventh fight, and eighth fight. I want to see him learn his craft now, because I think that was a bit of a gamble, because they, they needed to dress the show up. So fair play for doing that to, to Dennis and Steve Crump, but you won't want to see uh, them going at, going at it again. And yeah, it's a good rematch down line, but not not for a few years. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because they're too evenly matched, aren't they? Do you think? But that's what we need. No, that's what we need. They, too often a fight like that happens fifteen fights down the line, and you're like, no, they could have done that ages ago. So I think. I, I, this is my argument. I think you should have three or four fights against journeyman, and then you got to fight someone who's three and four and oh as well. So we work out where you are, and then you move on. You might fight better quality journeyman two or three times. Then you got to fight another guy that's seven, eight and oh. So we find out where you are. Then all this thing of giving someone 15 fights against nobodies, it, it, the boxing economics isn't going to allow for that anymore. Not anymore, no. Well, it seems to be allowing it for Joshua, don't they? Yeah, oh. but nobody else. All right, then. Well, good luck to Kane Salvin, Tommy Frank. Look, what let Tommy Frank down, in my opinion, were he's got no punching power 13 and 0 before the fight, no stoppages. So when he went down to one arm, it was just a matter of time, wasn't it? Really, I think, before he got pulled out. Do you agree? Which is a shame. It's a shame because he showed everything you want to see in a fight. He showed heart, he showed, he showed heart. intelligence, he showed skill. And I said to Dennis, you've got to roll the dice with him sooner or later. But I, I bet Dennis has sat there now and he's regretting uh, not stumping up the money for Harvey Horn and also not taking the Sonny Edwards fight. Because if you say now he can bring Tommy back from, 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 from that fight, well, he could have brought him, brought him back from a Sonny Edwards fight if he got beat, couldn't he? Or the Harvey No, Horn. well, well, well so, so defeat... I always say this, the, the feeds are about context. If he had lost over 10 or 12 rounds to Sonny Edwards, like that's just a, mate, you got outclassed. Here is you were injured. Here is what? It's like, mate, you were injured, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah so, so you're not bringing him back from the same place you'd have brought him back had he just lost fair and square. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, we don't know what's said in between rounds, though, do we? Really, we don't. We don't, we don't know. We're not going to get to know, are we? But we're we're going to see, aren't we? But does Tommy Frank win a world title? Nah, but I don't think British guys of that size tend to win world titles. It's really hard unless you've got the machine behind you. Because look at look look what happened when Cal Five fought someone genuinely world class for the first time. The belt the belt the belt left his waist. Yeah. Do you feel that Tommy Frank, if he comes back and fights, Kyle Youssef beats him for British? I think he can, yeah. Um, be, uh, I don't know who would win. The best man of the night will win. But it's not something that's beyond Tommy. He, he's got the tools to do so. And Kyle, he's got the right corner behind him. Yeah. You do know that Kyle Youssef beat Tommy three times in amateurs, don't you? That's a different game now. Yeah. All right then. Well, we wish Tommy Frank well, and it were, yeah. it were, it wasn't nice to see him crying at the end, was it? You think? No, because he's there going. Well, hold on. I, I've lost a fight. I knew I could win, just because my body failed me. I, I've. Yeah. Yeah, I feel for him, man. I do feel for him. Yeah, it's a tough sport, but maybe he just hasn't got that toughness. Do you think, oh, there's maybe something in him that 
I don't think I think you need a little bit of tenacity at that weight. And if, like I said, thirteen and one now, and he hadn't stopped anybody, that's my wait, wait, wait. about him winning a title. But, but but I don't understand what he's done wrong. What what did he do wrong in that fight where you're saying I have concerns? There's no, nothing he could have done. I had concerns up. in his last two fights because. I felt that they were hometown decisions in his last two fights before that. Oh, okay. And he still hasn't had a stoppage. Now, if you're going 14 fights and you haven't stopped anybody, I think there's a problem with your punching power or you're fighting at wrong weight or you're not sitting down on your punches and you're coming up 28 and that's getting old for a flyweight. Do you, do you agree with that, Terry? Mm, yeah, I, I'm relatively new to the Tommy Frank movement so i don't know how many miles he took earlier on in his career but he doesn't strike me as a high mileage guy which is good yeah he hasn't got um, miles on clock and um, which is yeah so that that will extend him it's fit it's a butcher's dog which all glim rose fighters are i just feel yeah. like he needs a bit of punching power sheedy he, he'd, he'd had a, a stoppages at this stage of his career john fuchs had had stoppages so why as Tommy Frank not had stoppages. Why is this, why is he not stopping people? Is he practicing his art in the ring? Is he getting the rounds in? Why ain't he stopping people? Because is he being matched harder? Eh? Is he being matched harder than they were? I think his last three fights has been matched hard. Although the the one where the first one, where it, the Thailand kid who came over, they, they looked yeah. at his record. He'd only had an handful of fights. I think you might have been at that fight when ringside with me. I think they looked at his record that time and thought, oh, he, he, he's easy touch. But it then came out at a later after the fight that the kid had had 150 uh, Muay Thai fights or something. So he had good ring generalship, didn't he? But Thomas split yeah. decision, didn't he? Or, or a mandatory or whatever it were. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where he goes from me. He'll be out now a year with that, won't he? he if it's what we what, think. What? So what is it? Is it a shoulder? Yeah, I've heard a shoulder rotary cuff, is it? But I've also heard an elbow, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but if he's out a year or nine months, it's it takes him pushing 29 then, doesn't it, as a flyweight? Does he step up then to superfly? If he's not stopping people at flyweight, how is he going to stop them at superfly? Hey, this is you know, the added the added bulk might help him become more explosive. I don't know. I just yeah. think, I, I think it, it points to a wider issue with the whole Fight Academy thing. And there are two things for me that Dennis will have to answer. One, do you take Fight Academy around the country? Like, let's just assume that you're not going to get the crowds now, right? Because yeah. I don't think you are. Do you just take Fight Academy around the country and you just say, okay? We're going to take this thing around the country, which means we need lads all over the country who are part of the Fight Academy. Or is it a Sheffield-based proposition? I don't know. Um, I think one will be more successful than the other. And the second one then is, how do you feel you're stable? Because that stable, that, that, based on what I saw on Friday, that stable is not strong enough. For well, I said stable. that six years ago. You did. You gave Dennis a list, didn't you? Who needs to be signed? And all them kids that we gave him the list, they're all prospered, aren't they now? Yeah, and it's on I, Dennis now. It, it, I, I think my take on it is when you're serious about boxing, you've got to spend the money. Well, Dennis had first refusal on Daniel, uh, David Adelaide, and couldn't get it over the line. Now, that for me is when arm, alarm bells start to ring. There's a heavyweight here, and he's, he's scaring world ranked fighters to death in sparring. And he's ready for turning pro in the next 18 months. Why are you not signing him on a long term deal uh, with a bit of a signing on fee now? And then in 18 months, he can start after he's finished his degree, and then you move forward. Now, when you're getting first refusal on David Adderley and you're not closing it, there's a problem now. If you look who David Adelaide fought in his third fight, it was the guy who, Phil Williams. Now, Phil Williams yeah. fought Cash Alley at weekend. That Cash Alley is now 18 and 1. So that's, that was Cash's 19th fight. So if Dennis is star heavyweight, he's fighting a, a journeyman in his 19th, and David Adelaide iced him in his third, do you see where the two fighters are going? I'm not having a go at Dennis here. 
I'm just saying what 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 is he doing? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Cash Alley needs to be in with better than that, doesn't it? Something should have been a bit more concrete months ago now. That's not a dig at Dennis or Crumpy. I just think that what are they playing at? Nobody's going to say anything to Dennis because they're all frightened to death of him, but <laughs> I will, and I always have done. Where is he so going I, to Alley? So I will I'll say this as someone who's who's seen Five Strong get made in this period. A lot of guys just don't fancy. What, fighting cat? A lot. Just in general. So it could have been Cash. It could have been Nick Webb. It could have been anyone. They just don't fancy it where they're like, well, mate, to be honest, I've been off for this many months. I have to get back in shape. And uh, uh, uh. Everyone was making excuses. Like The number of people who actually wanted a fight in this, in this kind of pandemic disrupted year is small. Yeah. A lot of people are like, I'll just wait till next year. Or I'll just wait till the crowds are back. Yeah. It, it, and that's so disrespectful. But someone like Phil Williams would just show up. He'd go, right, well, how many rounds? Yep, I'll be there for that. Pay me. Yeah. I mean, Dennis is willing, willing, uh, is willing to... I'm willing to let Dennis come on channel if he wants and answer these questions in a debate. If you want to come on here, Dennis, and we could do like... Uh, like a Sam Rothstein in, in the casino where he's ca calling out the uh, Vegas commission. Well, I'm calling you out, Dennis. If you want to come and answer these questions as to why you didn't sign David Adelaide when you had first refusal on your lap and why where you're going with Cash Alley, if you want to come on here and an answer, uh, talk about that, we'd be willing to, I'd be willing to have a debate with you. It's just that I like Cash Alley and... His cousin sponsors me and his showroom's next door to my office. And I just feel that Cash is in no man's land at the moment. That's harsh. Can, isn't it? If I say, that, you I'm gonna say, oh, you're being harsh there because you, you, you're having another fallout with Dennis. No, it's not what I haven't said to Dennis's face for a month. Where are we going with Cash Alley then? What are we doing here? What, 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 what's happening? What, where are we going? What's what's the plan here? Where's Where's the... End result. What's the what? What route are we planning for for Cash Alley here? If you plan a route oh. for a fighter over two years, what is Cash's plan now? Has he gone backwards under Dennis? Yes or no, Terry? No, I don't think he has. No, well. I don't. Uh, no, no, and I don't think twenty twenty is just a bad year for measuring things. If I'm being honest with you, because of yeah, the sheer probably. number of of heavyweights who don't fancy it this year. They're heavyweights who just don't fancy it. The bigger guys don't fancy it because it takes them longer to get fight ready. But they're at the most risk of getting knocked out. So they're just like, nah, I'm going to sit this one out. But I'd like to see Cash Alley v Nick Webb next year. Why not? Well, what was Dennis doing with Josh Whale? Josh Whale should have fought on December the 3rd in Spain on a yacht for a WBF featherweight title. That, that happened, but the posters were made up, but Nobody were allowed to announce it. Well, why are posters made up then? Why can't we say anything about it if posters are made up? And that's been going on for four months. See, that's another thing that I thought, well, where, where, where's boxing going here? What, why does it need all these trips out to Spain to make a fight when posters are made? I don't get that. I don't get it all. And maybe it's because of virus. I know it got put back, didn't it, from October to December. But what, what's happening with Josh Whale? He's not fought in 10 months. And his contract's up in New Year. Will Josh leave Dennis? I don't know. All will be revealed, but I, I think that Dennis has, has got some soul. To go where? Where, where? But to go where? Where, not, where, where not, will Josh not, Whale go? Well, Josh Whale's got his manager's license now, hasn't he? So maybe he might not renew his managing manager's contract with Dennis after Christmas. I don't know, but uh, where? What? Josh Whale can go on any show, can he? He's been offered to go on Sky, MTK. You know, in the last few months, he's had offers, good offers, and Mick's knocked him back because obviously they had, they've had this fight coming up December third. That's not happened, has it? So I was no, Josh put him in with listen. Just put him in with Isaac Lowe. Yeah, let's have let's have Josh Well be Isaac Lowe. We sparred Isaac Lowe, and Isaac Isaac won't take that fight. So we sparred Isaac. Him and Isaac have sparred. I just wonder if Josh and his dad, and I don't know, but if the now that Josh has got his managers, if Josh is going to say, do you know what? I've got my managers. We've had four fights with you, Dennis. We've won four. 
we were good for each other. Let's move on and part as mates. I wonder if that's going to happen or if Dennis has got some up his sleeve for Josh. And well, no, no. Okay, so let's 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 strip it down and go. Where's Josh Well going to go? Well, he doesn't need to go anywhere, does he? If he's his own manager, he can go on anybody's shows, can't he? He's been offered seven fights. Well, he's been offered since March, and they've not well, just been. Be, well, and he, he's ready to be a B-side guy and get slapped about, is he? No, his dad. Well, that's probably it. You see, his dad probably didn't want him to be B-side. So where is he going to yeah. go? I don't know. But he'll only ever be an A-side on like a Dennis Hobson show. Well, you know, there could be other people who put him on an A-side, but I don't know. It, it remains to be seen, but. The, the kids well, trained all summer and and autumn, and he's he's had, he's had no he's got no show for it, has he? There's no no date for him, is there? So, hey, that's sometimes that's boxing, Russ. Yeah, sometimes it's harsh, and obviously I'm gonna go out on a limb for for Josh because I like him. I'm close to him and his dad, and I signed him for Dennis. And when people were like, Josh, where well, he's got eleven defeats. Well, if you look closely at them, eleven defeats, there could really be five. If things could have gone the other way, you know, when you're B side, because they've had enough at B side, a bit like Glenn, uh, Glenn Johnson, he had enough at B side, didn't he? Because them losses he's got, you could quite easily say half of them could have gone the other way, couldn't they? You know what yeah, I mean? but if we, but if we, okay, so let's, and I think it, it points to a wider thing in boxing. There are only so many slots, or what I call money making slots in boxing. There are only so many. Yeah, and. The majority of them are on Sky and BT. Everyone else is like, you either sell a load of tickets and that's how you make your money or you've got someone like Dennis who can position you to fight for things like European titles and so forth, right? So I can see Josh, if, if Josh thinks he can do 1,000, 2,000 tickets, he might go, right, I want to go solo. Just do shows in Barnsley. Yeah. Fair enough. Why not? You've got the family behind you. But me, I, I would stay in the institution and I'd be nudging Dennis. I'd be like, look, Dennis, you've got to start making these alliances with people. So if you can't put a show on, at least you've got a friendly relationship with someone who can. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just feel that Dennis has got some soul searching to do. I think he needs to sit down and think, where am I going here with this? Where, am I, where, where is he heading? Because that other night will have hurt Dennis, you know, Tommy losing. And I just, I just feel that any new signings need to be, people need to sign with him for them to move forward now because you can't recycle Kane, Salvin and Suffy again because it's going to damage the careers after they've only had six fights each. So that's not going to happen next. Cash Alley needs to be in a fight, a Nick Webb sort of fight, or they need to pay Dave Allen you know, what he wants and get him and cash at it. David do it for money. You know, a cheeky 25 or something, something like that. Him and, but and Dave, Dennis would want options on Dave then, so I don't know if that's why he's had Dave commentating or if he's had him commentating just because he might stick a few views on. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does moving forward because obviously you can't keep dining out on Clinton Wood stories. And Atten, he's got to regroup, I think, and get some new signings. Kids that are turning over. <coughs> That's what he needs. What do you think? Oh, yeah, pluck up. Not even that, but th there are kids floating about now who are massively under undervalued. Like Fra Frank's got a bloated stable, and there are guys there who Frank might not shower the love with. I, I think. Dennis should have been banging the door to sign the kid like Louis Lin. Louis Lin would have been a perfect kid for Dennis. Yeah. My, my, my criteria is simple. Stable kids, hard trainers. That's all you want. And you just get, you just hoover up those kids. He could have had Echo Esselman. He could have had Derek Asaze. They're both kids out of Nottingham. They'll do units in Nottingham. Yeah. Like, but, but it comes back to, has Dennis just looked at the lie of the land and said, I can't take a kid from zero to a world title now. So all I want to do yeah, is put on really that, good shows locally. Manny Bridges, anyway, with powers that be, I think. To do that would be very hard, I think, because Ian and Warren and just, they jump on him because there's, there's old wounds, isn't there, from when back when Dennis were flying high. And they've got long memories, aren't they, Ern and Warren, if you know what I mean. <laughs> partly, partly, Russ, but also you've got to remember, in boxing, every deal gets done eventually. 
every deal gets done eventually. So there's always a chance. And all you ever do is you, if you can just accumulate enough talent that people can't ignore you, they've got to come to your door at some point. It's just yeah. a harsh reality of it. Yeah, you've got to force the issue with mandatory. He's got to rebuild with Tommy Frank and get him into mandatory positions. Go and win a British title. Tommy's already knocked a British title back twice now. Go and get a British title. Get on the map. I mean, what are we in the sport for knocking British titles for? Kane Salvin's got to be going for a British title in two and a half years from now. They've got to say, right, 2023, Kane Salvin's got to fight for a British title. He's got to be ready. So he doesn't need to be rushed. He's 6 and 0 now, and he's the star attraction there if Josh Whale leaves after Christmas. So, and, and obviously, Cash, but Cash has got to be put in the right fights. Don't be saying he can't fight. He's got to be put in the right fights that's right for him and right for Richard Towers. You see, well, they can, or, they can, or they can move into position where and get rankings. Fighting the Phil Williams of this world doesn't excite me. My phone read up all night, but a late replacement, can't really knock it. But if he's fighting him in his 19th and Adelaide fought him in his third, that's where the careers are at. 28-year-old and a 20, is it 23, Adelaide? If they're going to meet down the line, David Adelaide is already in front of Cash. Do you see where I'm coming from? Nah. No, 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 no. Don't you think? No? Because, no, and I'll tell you why. In that fight, I think it's easier for Cash Alley psychologically to fight David Adelaide than it is for David Adelaide to fight Cash. Yeah? Oh, There's I'm something... Him. I'm saying, as regards all they fought... It doesn't matter. It when they fought... He fought that guy in his third fight. Cash has fought him nah. in his 19. You're only as good as your last fight. Nah, that's our playground talk, Russ. You know that. <laughs> like, like... Cash Alley's a grown man, right? Yeah. He's been in the ring with David Price. He's going to look at David Adelaide and be like, I've, I've faced bigger guys than you. Yeah. 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 There you, is you, see what, do you, see, do you see what I mean? So w- when they face each other, the record actually is only a part of it. The other part, that's that psychology of that seasoning that we talk about, Russ. Cash has had a bit more of it than David has. Maybe. Now, has, da- has David got more long term upside? Potentially. But if they were to meet now, Cash is a favourite just for the fact that he's done more reps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if they met now, it, it, they won't put Cash in, they won't risk David Adelaide against Cash, but I, like I said, I remember seeing David Adelaide oh, two and a half year ago, maybe nearly three years ago, sparring Yui, and the first time I laid eyes on him, and Frank Smith from Berry said to me, have you seen this kid here? And I went, yeah. And he also sparred a kid called Cassius, a big six foot six black fella from America. Cassius from- Cheney. Yeah, and they they they, they were it, Peter Peter Fury were having one in one out sparring. This were like, and everybody were watching, and I were like, "Who's them? Who are these kids here, Frank?" I think I'm not sure if I went over with Dave Allen. No, I think I went over on me on my own. Can't remember. Yeah, I think I did. And he sparred Yui, and he, he, he were throwing bombs for for a few rounds, and then Yui sort of like got got on got scored him after that. He he couldn't get. But he, he were lethal. He were lethal, very lethal and very quick. And I'd I'd heard stories then that he'd sparred Joshua and he wanted to test himself. And I think he was a teenager then, 19, 20. Very quick, very nice kid, very polite, very intelligent. A credit to his parents. Very nice kid. I think he lives a couple of miles up the road from me. He's not yeah. far. Yeah, he's from a is is his mum a barrister or something? I, think I don't know. Barrister, the, I think the front. I think his parents are legal people or, or something. He's a bright kid, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's got. He's. Oh well, I, I love it because it was so funny. The first time we heard of David Adelaide, like he goes to, he went to the same college as a couple of kids that trained at ours, and they'll talk about how he used to just terrorize everyone. He was like Debo from Friday. Debo, uh, I mean, Friday. yeah, he, he'd have you under pressure. But I think with David Adelaide, people need to sort of cool their their heels on this. And the reason I say that is, he did have much. He didn't have much of an amateur career, so we we don't know how good he is versus his peers because he's the same age as a lot of guys who have all fought each other. Mm-hmm. And so we need to see that before we can make a, a judgment. And then the other thing is, we still haven't seen him where he's had to think in the ring. Yeah. And it's that thought process for me that determines whether you're a world champion. You want to get hit on that. 
Uh, yeah, and, all, and also, what are they going to do when someone just clams up on them? Are they able to create openings of their own? Are they able to, to use their skills to, to put the fight in the areas of the ring they need it to be? And those sorts of things. Yeah. All right. All right, then. Well, we've had a good uh, two hours or so. Thanks for coming oh, on. Hey? Yeah, make, guys, make sure you do one hour when it comes out and then one hour tomorrow. Yeah. You want to get any plugs out, Terry, to your the boxing, the beautiful boxing podcast? Is it? Oh yeah, mate. If you've got time on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, the beautiful boxing podcast, just jump on. Like you know, I like to feel a lot of those episodes you can listen to now, and they still sound reasonably fresh. So yeah, jump on that. Let me know what you think. Um, the, the one I do want to say is, everyone listening to this. Put this on your social media. Send this to your mates in the WhatsApp group. Whatever you got to do, because what Russ does isn't easy. Like he takes a lot of risks to entertain you guys, and I mean that in terms of, you know, sometimes Russ will say stuff and there's real comeback, like real life comeback on it. So you got to show your appreciation for that content by sharing it. Like you've got to, you got to help this guy get to five thousand, then ten thousand subscribers because. This is the voice that boxing needs. No one's going to take real fans seriously until they have a seat at the table. And that seat is not IFL. That seat's not behind the gloves. That seat's definitely not boxing social. And so you, you have to help Russ get to that point. So everyone should be pushing this through their social media channels and saying, cool. if you want that real boxing talk, just jump on this. Thank you very much. I just want to give a big shout out to Eastwood Autos, Keep Back in Channel, AJ Obson, Innovation Allies, Bump Bump, Last at Mohicans, Proper Man, uh, <laughs> South Yorkshire Packaging Services. Who else is there? There's a gun coming at me is at the moment. But, you know, they're the main ones. Uh, Neil and Robert Lacoste, Cheers for Trainers. Uh, that's about it, really. Well, we're going to give we're going to give Frank Smith a shout out and his mate Dave, but we're going to give Rico our our friend Rico Ely yeah. a shout out. He uh, very educated young man, and he's going to be coming on the channel tomorrow. But you've got a very important pod coming out today, aren't you, Terry? At four o'clock. Uh, well, I think it'll be it'll be out by the time this goes out. So, yeah. yeah well, it's just more it's more it's more discussion about. Just trying to kill the nonsense about people calling Joshua great and then just saying, well, what is it to be great as a heavyweight? And just reminding fans that, you know, there are guys who earned their greatness over 15 grueling rounds, not just fighting B-level guys from Bulgaria. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Well, thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure, pleasure as always. I hope you have a great day. No worries, day. mate. And it's been, we have had... One hour 56, so that's brilliant. Thank you very much. No uh, worries, Russ, mate. You take care, Terry. Take care, pal. Peace, mate. Peace out, mate. Bye. Bye. Well, that was Terry. Terry C from London. Uh, you don't drive a car down there, you know, and I can see why, because every time I go down there, I get fines. From you, don't I, Sadiq Khan, you dick. Resign your position now or come see me. Don't like you, Sadiq Khan, you prick. Worst London mayor ever. So that's just because I keep getting parking tickets. So not parking tickets. Congestion emissions and Dartford Tunnel I've had. And I've also had a, another one from around there. Well, a parking ticket, I think. Is it Orn Church? That Kent or some Essex, so I don't like how they conduct themselves down there. Plus, it's seven pound fifty a pint, so London's not for me. But I enjoyed that with Terry. Uh, we wish everybody well. If anybody's offended by anything we've said on here, I don't give a fuck. Come see me. Uh, that's about it, really. But we just try to add a bit of comedy effect to this and a bit of banter, a bit of lads banter. But we do know our boxing. And we're pretty serious about it because this is an everyday thing for me. So that's why I look rough as a badger's arsehole at the moment. But uh, Terry knows his stuff. He's a bit better at it than me. I'm just a bit more funny around and I've got a bit more front. So I hope you enjoyed it. I think that's about it. I'm going to run a competition in next 
probably two weeks or summer, and I'm going to give a pair of trainers away. There's 10 pair to give away Lacoste trainers, brand new in box. And I'm going to give a pair away for everybody who, who answers the right question that I put out at the end of every video. Right? At the end of every video for the next 10 videos from next week, I'm going to put a, put a question at the end of the video. And the first, so, so you all know now to log on quick. So the first, so I'll premiere the videos. So the first person who gets the question right, the first person, right, who gets it right in an email or on the comment section, right, gets a pair of Lacoste trainers, all right. There's 10 pairs to choose from all different colors and shapes and sizes. So, all right. So peace out. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. I'm off to go shower now, so I'm off out.